G'day there guys, dusting off bad memories and playing them on repeat in my head before I go to sleep every night. Back at it again with another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love this content like I love you, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and get ready for some bloody contentious questions. Posted by user Dull Amy, titled, Am I the a-hole for terrorizing my roommates into cleaning up their crap? So I live with two roommates, 28 male and 21 female, who are less than helpful when it comes to cleaning the house. Wet clothes are left in the washer for days on end. Food is left rotting in the fridge and in the sink for several weeks if I do not clean it. They also just casually throw garbage into the yard. I've asked nicely multiple times for them to clean their mess, and even not so nicely a few times. I am far from the most hygienic person in the world myself. I'll leave dishes until the next day, and just general untidiness but they take it to a different level. All this filth, since my refusal to clean it anymore, has brought in some new roommates for us, mainly giant ass rats, which seem to have moved into our yard. The kicker is, they are both absolutely terrified of rats. A plan soon hatched in my mind, and with a bit of creativity, some invisible thread and an old bristle broom, I now have a faux rat. I named him Ronald. Every few days or so, for the past two weeks-ish, I have been placing it in the corner of the kitchen, waiting for one of them to walk in. Then I yank Ronald as hard as I can at an angle so he shoots towards them. Each time they've ran from the kitchen screaming in fear. I won't lie, I very much enjoyed doing it at first, but kinda felt guilty at having made a grown man bawl his eyes out and thought the lesson has probably been learned. So I decided we had to have a house meeting about the infestation and how they don't feel safe in the home anymore. Personally, I didn't feel safe with a pan of veggie rice rotting on the countertop for 12 days, but hey, ho, hey, ho. I simply stated that if they had just cleaned up their junk, the rats would most likely disappear. Lo and behold, the place was spotless within an hour and since then there has been a lot less mess. Ronald has been put into retirement and is resting in my bedroom, ready to pounce if ever needed again. But did I take it too far? Hmm, that's a hard one. I don't think you took it too far. I think you took a chaotic, neutral approach to solving the mess. You didn't directly attack them, you used your associate, Le Rat, to attack them on your behalf. It's a pretty intuitive solution to the problem, and you didn't cause too much harm to them, besides maybe some, you know, PTSD from rats, and potentially a heart attack or two, but you know, uh, the, the ends justifies the means, right? OP, not the a-hole. Lmao, that's hilarious. Not the a-hole, that's a harmless prank as far as I'm concerned, and more than a fair trade for making you live in the filth. Not the a-hole. This is hysterical and effective. I love your creativity. Picture of Ronald, please? OP didn't give us a picture. Also, don't tell your roommates. I feel like they would have the complete lack of self-awareness to understand why that had to be done. Yeah, don't tell your roommates. They'll just double down on not cleaning and find other ways to make your life miserable as well. The key to a good covert operation is never talking about it. Posted by user Gardening Monster, titled, Am I the a-hole for bringing my garden with me when I moved? I, female 25, have been renting a house since I was 18, for seven years. When I moved in, the backyard was a large piece of dirt with no lawn or anything, just a decently big backyard with a fence all around. It was a cheap but not great house, but I signed because I wanted the backyard space. Over the past few years, I erected a small garden shed, greenhouse, and pizza oven, transportables. Planted lots of veggie gardens in big transportable garden beds, and put down some nice pavers, an aquaponics setup, and generally made the backyard a really green and beautiful place to be. It became the green oasis all my friends gathered at. A few months ago, my landlord let me know that they were planning to sell, and my final move out day was a week ago. When I left, I brought my garden with me to my new place. Nothing in my last backyard was directly planted into the ground, and nothing permanent. I dismantled the sheds and greenhouse, 
loaded up all the pots and garden beds onto a truck, and cleared the backyard in three days with lots of help. My former landlords are furious over this, and demanded that I return the backyard to the former state. Apparently, they'd listed the house for sale with pictures of the backyard, and potential buyers were walking away from the house when they saw the barren backyard. They're accusing me of stealing their plants and wrecking the backyard. Legally, I'm fine. My contract said I could garden, and I have photos from the first real estate walkthrough before I moved in that show that the backyard was in the same state as I first found it, although with more fertile soil now, probably. The same real estate agent signed off my final inspection, and I got my deposit back. I've received mixed responses, though because I saw the landlords taking pictures of my backyard before I left, but didn't make the connection because, in my honest opinion, when pictures of a house has furniture in it, you don't expect to also get free furniture. Some of my co-workers suggested that I am the a-hole because the house valuation certainly has fallen dramatically because I didn't tell them I was taking my garden with me so they couldn't plan to landscape before lockdown hits. I'm gonna go with not the a-hole on this one, you absolutely didn't have the intention to have that as a permanent fixture, as it seems like you've been planning that for quite a while, and I think that should make it apparent to the homeowners that, hey, this stuff can move any time. You haven't come up to me and discussed, hey, you know, you bought all this, but now that it's in our garden, it's our property. So as the ancient saying goes, assumptions make an ass out of you and me. And you've made quite the ass out of these homeowners, and they deserve what's happened to them. OP, you keep doing you and being fabulous. Not the a-hole. This is a very classic story of landlord trying to benefit off home improvements paid for by the tenant. If your landlord was honest, he would have asked you how much you wanted to leave the garden as it was. You owe him nothing. This. They can pay you for improvements they've allowed you to make over time with your own money. In fact, a similar thing happened to me at my old apartment. I was granted permission to repaint the concrete balcony. I put some lush fake lawn, some timber decking, outdoor furniture, hanging plants, and fairy lights. When the owners were selling, they asked me how much to leave it as it is. I set my price and was literally paid to move out. Win-win all around. The fact they didn't take this route does not make you the a-hole. Good on your landlords for recognizing the value in your improvements. Most people are not a-holes. You just hear about the ones who are. That is correct. However, most people are somewhat selfish, and it is relatively rare for someone to volunteer to pay for something they think they might be able to get for free. The balcony slash yard difference is that a landlord might reasonably expect someone to take their items off a balcony, but might not expect someone to dismantle their garden. So I think a higher number of landlords would not even think of paying someone for the work put into a backyard, because they would just function on the assumption that all work would remain in place when a tenant moved out. Not the a-hole. Not at all. If the owners want the garden looking nice, they pay up and put in the effort themselves. Their house value is not your responsibility, and any decent landlord slash owner will put money into a property after a long-term tenant has been there. Just wanted to add that having the garden almost portable was a clever move from OP. Super smart. Also, OP moved in there at 18 and has been doing great. They seem like a cool person. Am realtor, and friends with many landlords. They would be so lucky to get a tenant that takes care of and appreciates their property like OP. OP is a cool person. OP is right. OP is not an a-hole, and OP is totally within her realm to give the landlord the double bird as she skips the hell out of that contract. My landlady has told me and my boyfriend multiple times how grateful she is to have tenants that care about her property. We also love gardening, so have done up what was a very plain gravel slash lawn garden into a nice green space. Everything is in large pots, and we fully intend to take it all with us, including the half wine barrel miniature pond. I can't imagine landlady getting angry at us for taking it when we go. They're my plant babies. Not the a-hole OP. Posted by user, throwaway sad guy. Titled, Am I the a-hole for not marrying the girl I'm supposed to be, and causing major problems for my family? This will sound unbelievable to those not from my country, all I can say is that it is real. 
When I was five, my parents brought my dad's friend's daughter, X, about three years old, to live with me and my sister, Y, who was seven. X's family was poor and couldn't support their children. They had six. So they sent X here because they really trusted my parents. X, Y, and I grew up together, and my parents were awesome to all three of us. I had a lot of fun growing up, and I am extremely close to my family. I'm now 29. Three years back, I went abroad for my masters, and then went back to my country. There, I met a girl, P, and we fell in love. I'd like to propose soon, and felt like this would be a good time to introduce P to my family. Y already knew of her, and P just graduated. This weekend, I told my family that I would like for them to meet someone special and set up a video call. No idea who they were expecting, but when they realized P was my girlfriend, everything just blew up. Apparently, they had already discussed and arranged my marriage with X years back, and she was the one I would have to marry. X was aware her father had told her. Cue lots of screaming and yelling, including some choice words from X to P about how she's a modern girl, euphemism in my culture for tramp, and how she must be after me for my money. She comes from a richer family, by the way. I was just too shocked to react initially. The next day, I told my parents that I look at X as family. They started saying ridiculous things like they've never let her into my room, while apparently Y was allowed, and drawing all sorts of other parallels between X and Y, trying to demonstrate why X wasn't like my sister. They also said stuff like, no one can understand me better than X, and that she will keep the family together, while P will alienate me from them. They also told me I'm ruining the family. X also cried non-stop, and then shut herself in the room, accusing me of not wanting her only because she was poor amongst other things. She also said no one from her village would marry her now because her family has told everyone back home that she's going to be marrying me. My sister was not aware of any of this either. Now, I told X I don't care that no one will marry her from her village. It is a likely possibility, or that her life is quote-unquote ruined. I also told my parents I won't ruin my life for them to be able to keep their word. X's father is coming to our house once he's able to. Transport restrictions are still in place, but he had a long phone call with my parents. I'm sure a lot of emotional blackmail is to follow, and I already feel rather guilty about X because she's a nice girl. My sister is on my side, but even if my parents cut me off and at the risk of X ruining her life, I am not going to go ahead with this at all. Am I the a-hole? I'm a girl with a big fat no. You're not the a-hole for breaking the bounds of a semi-arranged marriage. I'm not sure you were even aware that you were supposed to get married. They can't decide who you get married to. That's not a thing that should happen, in my opinion, at least. I don't blame you for your reaction to all of this. And if your parents cut you off, then so be it. They can't force you to do something you don't want to do. You're an adult, not the a-hole. Edit. A lot of people asking me where I'm from. It's a Southeast Asian country, just don't want to say if it's the exact place you guys are asking about. X was apparently aware that I didn't know, but she was told by my parents and hers that I'm a family man and will do the right thing, so there's no need to worry. She's basically accused me of wrecking the family too. My sister is really upset on my behalf, and also that she wasn't told any of this. My sister's family, her husband and his parents, have said if there's any sort of confrontation, they'll be there to back me up. Not sure if this detail counts, but P is also from my country, but also came abroad to study. So that's not a reason as to why my parents are unaccepting of P, they just want me to marry X. Not the a-hole. Although to some extent, it sounds like X is a victim here too. So I think saying you don't care that no one will marry her from her village was a bit harsh. She's obviously been given the impression that you are on board with the idea of marrying her. Your parents are at fault here. If they didn't want you to see X as your sister, they probably should have told you that a few decades ago. Plus, I think he should let X know that he never knew about it, and had he known, he would have put an end to it years ago. If she knew he didn't know, then we know she is manipulative as the rest of his family. If she didn't, it allows her to deal with what happened. I was really harsh, I do agree, 
but I am flabbergasted that she knew this was the plan, but never even mentioned it once to me. She's apparently known for a long time, but I've had girlfriends even back in school and undergrad. This just makes me believe she thought I'd just break up with all these girls and go for her in the end, which makes me feel so weird. Hey, stepsister. <laughs> just kidding. She used to act coy around me and everything, but I assume that's because she was awkward about not actually being related. But did she know that you were unaware? That is the key here to understanding her in all of this. I mean, you are not the a-hole, your family is, however, but this is to see if she is or is just a victim as well. My sister is of the opinion that X knew I was unaware. Apparently, she's discussed marriage multiple times before with X when they were younger, like who would you want to marry, which guy do you find cute type conversations, and X never once mentioned that she wants to marry me to her either. Sister believes it's likely that we both were kept out of the loop by my parents and X's parents because they knew I'd not be okay with it, and that if my sister came to know, she'd tell me. I do admit, I've not asked X directly if she was aware that I didn't know, though. Not the a-hole. I think you should talk to X and explain that you never knew, and explain that you do care what happens to her. It sounds like to do after growing up so close but that it's your parents' responsibility to care for her using their resources, but you are not a resource to be freely given to whoever they want. If it's scandalous for you to talk with her one-on-one, -on -one, maybe your sister could pass along the message, if you trust her to deliver it accurately. It sounds like your parents promised X's parents that they would take care of her future, and you are a part of the package. I spent several years in a culture like this growing up, and it's understandable from their perspective, but you got out. If you and P can help use your social standing or anything to help get X matched up with a good guy, I think it's worth a try. It would be sad for her to be forced to marry a guy who doesn't treat her well. Again, it's your parents' responsibility to take care of her, not yours. So you really don't have to help, and you definitely don't have to feel guilty for not marrying X. Edits. Someone else mentioned the option of helping her get further education, and that's brilliant. Again, not OP's responsibility, but if he wants her to help break the cycle too, then it's worth looking into. If she leaves and finds someone to marry at a university, then she might be considered a wild woman by her village friends and family, but she could have a much more fulfilling life of her choice. Posted by user environmentalcat48, titled... Am I the a-hole for telling my mother-in-law she needed to leave after she told my husband he married a lemon? My mother-in-law was over at our house, and I've been feeling pretty bad lately. I'm 18 weeks pregnant with a little boy. I have three other children from a previous marriage, and we have a ton of farm animals and dogs that I take care of during the day. Just taking care of the animals is a chore itself. It involves shoveling, bending, pushing, and lifting, and often chasing something that makes a break for it, since my kids often open the gate and forget to close it. The children can also be a handful. My two-year-old is very whiny and clingy, and cries at the drop of a pen. Anyways, I was folding some laundry in the living room, and my husband and mother-in-law came in. I hadn't seen my husband yet, and he came over and gave me a kiss, and asked me about my day. I told him I was hurting in my back and was having some Braxton Hicks contractions. So he said, Baby, you don't have to do the laundry or cook dinner today. I'll do it. If you don't feel like doing anything at all when I come home, I'll do it and you can just hang out with the kids and rest. I thanked my husband and told him I would still fold the laundry, but I would love if he would make dinner. Later that evening, I was giving the kids a bath in the bathroom, but I overheard my mother-in-law tell my husband that he married a lemon and he could probably do better than me. Angry, I came out of the bathroom and told her she needed to leave the house. My husband understands it hurt my feelings, but my mother-in-law keeps calling me and leaving messages on how I was rude to her for kicking her out of her son's house. Am I the a-hole? Edit, since I'm answering some of the same questions, I'll type this out. My son isn't a brat. He's just two and acts two. I also clean and make breakfast and lunch. I don't just let the kids starve all day. My children's dad left when my son was born because he was an NICU baby and he didn't want to deal with a sick baby. He then ran off into the sunset with a younger, childless woman. I met my husband when my son was three months old. 
We lived together before we got married. He built the house, but I helped pay for the land. I'm laid off at the moment due to coronavirus. My husband and I just married last month, but we've been together for longer than that. My husband is very kind and gentle, and he didn't have time to respond to his mum as I came out almost immediately when I heard it because I'm hormonal and was tired and it hurt my feelings. I don't know why those were relevant questions, but there you are. Good on you, OP. Good on you for standing up for yourself. That's despicable, disgusting behavior that shouldn't be accepted in today's society. Oh, you married a lemon because uh, she has three kids, you can do better. Actually, shut your mouth. The mother-in-law probably knows full well the circumstances of OP's life, probably knew that the husband walked out on her. Fair enough, we don't know the complete story, we have this version of events, but I'm more inclined to believe her, with the three kids, who's had a man abandon his family. Dear Lord, that is not a good situation to be put in, especially in a time like now. OP, you sound like a saint, your husband sounds like a very lucky man to have you, and I'm so grateful that you found happiness. That mother-in-law can go kick rocks, pound sand, and get tackled by an emu for all I care. You're not the a-hole, dear lord. I'm already on team not the a-hole from the title, but hold on. Did your mother-in-law say her son's house? Not, you know, the house that both of you live in? The house that is also your house? Is she delusional? Does she think that your husband is the lord of the manor and that you're not his equal? You'd catch me singing to the mother-in-law. This house is his house. This house is my house. But either way, ma'am, it sure is not your house. Greetings, communist comrade. I'd just like to remind you that your karma is my karma and your rewards are my awards. Fork him over. <laughs> not the a-hole. Who criticizes a pregnant woman in her own house? A pregnant woman with a toddler on a farm, plus two other children. She's 18 weeks pregnant with a little boy and three other children, four total, plus a farm. So she has four hungry children and a crop in the field. I don't get the reference. I don't get it. Posted by user, just barge right in. Titled, Am I the a-hole for kicking my roommate out for something that her friend did? I am a 37-year-old man, and my roommate is an early 30s woman. I rent a two-bedroom house, and it had a spare room. So I decided to look for a roommate last year. I had a couple of people interested, but a friend asked me for a favor, and I let her move in. She pays about 30% of the rent, because that's all she can afford. My roommate has one particularly good friend who she invites over regularly. I do not like that woman at all. She is loud, self-centered, and has no concept of boundaries, property, or privacy. She has accidentally eaten my food and drunk my beer several times when she came over, and I have voiced my opinion about her to my roommate regularly. My roommate's response has always been, as long as I'm paying my part of the rent, the company I keep is between them and me. On Saturday night, she invited her friend over. As I often am in my room, I was completely naked, lying over my covers, reading a book. I like being naked and expect a reasonable amount of privacy from civilized people. Man, I thought I was the only one that did that. When my roommate was in the bathroom, my door flew open like it was rammed by a siege engine. Her friend had barged in to surprise me, and instead of frantically apologizing for violating my privacy and seeing me naked, she burst out laughing as I fumbled to cover myself. By now, my roommate had come out of the bathroom, and her friend shouted, I saw his little pecker! My roommate snort laughed loudly. The next morning, my roommate was hungover, and so I told her that her time in this house was over, and that she had a month to vacate. I looked up the laws in my state, and since I am the only person on the lease, I can legally kick her out as long as I give her proper notice. She told me that she warned her roommate about privacy after what happened, and I told her I don't care at all. She brought that woman into the house. She was entertained by my embarrassment, and I wasn't comfortable living with her for another day. I told her if it were legal, I'd kick her out that second. My roommate has been nasty with me all week, saying that she has nowhere to go. I don't care, and keep telling her that she might want to start looking. Our mutual friend, who I originally did the favor for, has sided with her completely, and so I just blocked him. 
Am I going too far here, or am I not the a-hole in this case? I wouldn't describe your actions as being an a-hole. I'm just saying that you're very forward, and you're like burning everything, and I love it. It's like a bloody minefield going off, and we're just watching the fireworks. OP, you really do be a savage right now, and you're doing everything right. You're doing what everyone in the shower wishes they had the courage to do. They're like, damn it, why didn't I do that? God, I could have been so hurt direct. Imagine the look on their face. Now, if we reverse the roles, as we always do in situations like this, imagine the amount of charges you'd get as a man walking in on a woman like that. Imagine uh, how shut down you would be on social media, the shame you'd get from your friends if you did that. Just because the roles are reversed in this situation doesn't make it okay for her to do that. And I'm sure if it was the other situation, the police would be there instantly, kicking that man out, and it would be completely justified. I say burn those bridges as fast as you can, and don't look back. They did you so dirty, so dirty, and you deserve to live worry-free without that nasty woman in the house. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Your roommate is responsible for her guest's behaviours. Stealing by her friend would have been enough to kick her out, but laughing at you instead of kicking her friend out after she treated you like that was far out of line. She doesn't deserve better. She enabled her friends to make you feel unsafe for your privacy in your own home, and nobody has to live like that. It's just the consequences of her actions. In my opinion, she's welcome to go move in with the rude friend and leave the nude friend. <laughs> Not the a-hole. You might want to make sure you send her the notice by email too, so you had written proof she had it so you can legally change the lock and dump her stuff on the street in a month if she hasn't done anything about getting another place. That's a really good idea. I just sent her one just stating that I was officially telling her to vacate the house. Not just a good idea, legally required in most states. Everything needs to be in writing, physical writing, you don't have to specify a reason. Date and sign what you send, hand it to her personally, and make sure she reads it. But first, check whether your state requires service by certified mail. Isn't an email writing? I think they meant it's not only a good idea, but that it's also legally necessary. Otherwise, I'm at a loss as well. No, apparently not. Ran into this with my landlord, he refused to acknowledge via email, so I had to send via mail, and he acknowledged the next day. Posted by user, love my dogs. Titled, am I the a-hole for refusing to support our daughter after she gives birth? That's not very cash money, how do you love your dogs if you're going to do that? I'm not going to go into real detail, but essentially, my 27 female daughter has recently said some very racist things. Since she married her husband, she seems to have changed as a person and is much more distant and vicious towards the family. Things came to a head last weekend at our first big family get-together since COVID when she said that our eldest daughter's adopted son, who is black, he was adopted because our eldest and her husband are unable to have children, wasn't really part of the family. That's a yikes from me, dog. And that God didn't mean for you, eldest daughter, to have children, just accept what he gave you and stop forcing your options. Referring to the son on the rest of us. Ah, that's a big yikes from me, dog. What the hell? Our eldest and her son were devastated and some very heated words were exchanged before my 27-year-old daughter and her husband stormed out. Now, recently... Our 27-year-old daughter has announced that she is pregnant. She and her husband were planning on moving into the cottage on our property after the baby is born, so my wife and I can help out for the first year. During this time, our daughter doesn't plan on working, and has been clear that she expects us to contribute to her financial costs during the year. We had a similar arrangement with our eldest when she was trying for a baby, and our son and his wife also spent six months living in the cottage after their twins were born. However, after discussing with my wife, we feel that this would make the rest of the family uncomfortable with visiting us. Obviously, eldest and her son no longer want to come over, while 27 female and her husband are here, and our son's Latina wife has also expressed her discomfort around 27 female and her husband, and we are uncomfortable supporting people who are so blatantly racist. 
We told our daughter last Thursday in a Zoom chat about our decision, and she blew up at us, demanding to know why she wasn't allowed to express her option or opinion, and arguing that we aren't black, so why should we care? <sighs> My wife became very upset, and closed the chat, and has refused to speak to our daughter since, and she is blaming herself for not raising her better. Are we the a-holes here? Edit, thank you so much for your kind responses. I've tried to read all the comments, but this blew up overnight. However, some general things. One, our 27 female daughter assumed she could live with and be financially supported by us in the year after her child was born because our eldest went through significant financial hardship when she was trying to have a baby due to paying for IVF and fertility treatments, and as a result, almost ended up homeless because they remortgaged their house to afford it. But then her husband was in a car accident and needed time off work, meaning they were unable to pay their mortgage and the bank claimed their home. Can anyone tell me if OP knows what a full stop is? Two, I don't know what I can say to convince you this is real. Yes, this is from a throwaway because my main account has part of my real name on it and both my 27 female daughter and my son and his wife are familiar with it. There were three edits to this post. Originally, it included a couple of paragraphs about how our 27 female daughter made some homophobic comments about my wife's brother getting married to another man, and also some statements she made towards the Black Lives Matter movement. However, that post was over the 3,000 word count, and I decided to remove them as they aren't applicable to the current situation, and I want to focus more on our immediate family issue, rather than getting into a big LGBT slash Black Lives Matter argument. When I reposted it, the post was removed because this is not a debate sub, so I changed the title and reposted it as it is. Three. My wife and I have been supporters of the Black Lives Matter movement since before we got married 33 years ago. I came from a very racist family who disowned my older sister for marrying a black man and then kicked me out as a 16 year old for sneaking out of the house so I could go to my sister's wedding. We haven't really been LGBT supporters, we haven't been anti-LGBT, just not a part of the rallies and donations. Until my wife's brother came out a few years ago, and since then, we have made more of an effort to go to the parades and donation to things like the Trevor Project. Second edit to say that our 27-year-old daughter will not be homeless if we don't support her for the year following the birth. It was just supposed to be an opportunity for her to spend time with us, as otherwise, they will live two hours away. As far as I'm aware, they own their home outright, and her husband is financially well off enough to support her during this time without our help. Also, our adoptive grandson is only nine, so a bit young to understand why some parts of the family don't like him. Whoa, you have spelled it out right there. Okay, OP, you're definitely not the a-hole. I think we've made that one very clear here. What has gone wrong in this woman's life that she's turned down this dark path? I want to make all the jokes in the world, but this is not a laughing matter that is despicable behavior. And I'm surprised the entire family hasn't cut her out for these disgusting actions. Dear Lord. I know you people down in the comments don't advocate for cutting someone out of your life, but come on, someone this intense that is willing to be that vindictive and argumentative and not change their ways? Is it worth having someone like that in your life? Or do you cut your losses? If it were me, I'd fight it and I'd call them out at every opportunity if I continue to keep them in my life because it's not okay to hold those views. It's just not. So OP, absolutely don't let her live in your house. She's got a husband that wants to support her and keep her in a little echo chamber and so be it. Keep being awesome OP. Uh, you're not the a-hole. I love you. I love what you stand for. Thank you for donating to those causes. It's amazing to see. Not the a-hole. You don't owe your daughter anything here. Actions always have consequences. While she may be technically allowed to share her opinion, that doesn't mean that others are not allowed to react to it. She has to live with the consequences of her actions, and you and your wife are well within your rights to decide that your home and financial support are no longer open to her. She announced that she believes your grandson is not a part of the family, and that's a terrible thing to say no matter the circumstances you're allowed to be hurt and to react. I'd like to add a little to this response. You can't blame yourself for your daughter's behavior. Racism is learned and your other daughter is evidence that you didn't teach her racism. 
You said that she changed after she got married. That's probably the source. Family is no reason to accept others' beliefs that you find morally reprehensible. More addition to this, you are being excellent parents by teaching her actions have consequences. As my 65-year-old mother says about her two 40-something kids with kids of our own, you stop parenting, but you never stop teaching through your own actions and example. Edit. Yep, yep, guys. <laughs> what is that edit? <laughs> yes! What they are doing is exactly what people mean when they say to speak up and not accept the racism of others. When someone shows how racist they are, the easiest thing you can do is drop them. Their daughter can now learn that if she is going to be racist, her family won't tolerate her or her beliefs. Don't forget that your behavior in this situation will also affect your grandson immensely. I'm not sure how old he is, but if you allow your daughter to remain in the family spewing hate at your black grandson, and he sees that behavior being tolerated by his grandparents, this decision may scar him for life. What this would communicate to him is that he is not as deserving of love and respect, even if that's not your intention. Absolutely this. If he feels his grandparents don't stand up to his racist aunt, he may not trust you or feel safe to be himself around you and would feel that he's not part of the family. Put your words into actions. Definitely not the a-hole for fighting racism in your family. Am I the a-hole for calling all men Kevin? I'm the only woman in my workplace of about 50 people. Mostly, this is okay, except for the sales team. They're mostly younger men who will turn anything into one of two things, a PP measuring contest or a very obnoxious joke. They have jumped on the Karen meme with both feet, both hands and a duck. The only issue is that they don't just use the name Karen to talk about someone who is behaving in that snobbish, I wanna talk to your manager kind of way. They use it for all women. Woman standing in line? <laughs> Karen. Hairdresser full of women? Crowd of Karens! Older woman getting on the bus? Old Karen! Couple of female kids? Looked about eight or nine years old? In their brownie uniform doing litter picking up with a group? Little Karens! Resultantly, all women equal Karen, and Karen equals deserving of ridicule and mockery, and thus we have ended up at all women equals deserving of ridicule and mockery. And I ignored it at first figuring that it wouldn't last and they'd move on to something new as they normally do. But it's been months and they're still doing it. An attempt at a light-hearted conversation I tried with one of them, pointing out that maybe it was problematic, got me, unsurprisingly, called a Karen. So, I started calling all men Kevin when I am in earshot of one of them, including them. And when I'm referring to them, I really go all out. Like, make it a really loud nasal whine, and draw the word out. Especially if they're ticked off about losing a sale. Aw, is Kevin having a bad day? This, apparently, is a lot funnier than their Karen line, so other people have picked it up and run with it. So, now sales are ticked, and telling me I'm the a-hole. I don't think I am, and am planning on letting it run for maybe a week or so after they drop the Karen thing. Then I'll drop it. Am I the a-hole? By the way, management are as useful as an underwater hairdryer, so have done sweet frick all throughout all of this. Job hunting is underway, but nothing so far. Edit, for info, we don't have HR. Or rather we do, but it's a third party we've contracted out to, and on such a cheapskate rate, pretty much all they do is handle payroll. We are an IT service provider, so we don't have customers or clients in the office most of the time. And while this sort of back and forth is tolerated as banter, anything that even hinted at a lawsuit would get me blacklisted from the industry. I am nowhere near retirement age. I can't afford that. And yeah, I will admit that I am not a big fan of the sales team. While this is the longest running crap they've pulled, it is definitely nowhere near the most obnoxious. No, I would not say that you're the a-hole in this situation. You're just firing back with your own meme, and it's turned into a full-out meme war with casualties on all sides. 
You've risen from the ashes as the victor in this one, and the Kevins are not happy. So they're retaliating with salty tears, and you're firing back with, with a big stone hard wall, and being like, I ain't taking this. So good on you, you're not the a-hole, they are. Not the a-hole. Don't dish it out if you can't take it, Kevins. Won't lie, I'm stealing OP's idea for all the Kevins out there. My name is Kevin, I love and encourage this. Aw, oh, poor you. Did you ever hear about the research when teachers graded essays and the grade was affected by the name? I heard the jokes about the name, it's not a name, it's a diagnosis, etc. I personally have never felt any discrimination, but I'm really interested in that research. I read a lot from a young age, which helped me in writing essays, so I almost always got good grades. I only remember being graded badly from my female classmates based on the essay subject once. Apparently it's actually a thing, I never knew about this. It wasn't necessarily bad grades, but if Harry wrote the essay, he got a 9 out of 10, but a Kevin would get an 8 out of 10, so consistently lower. I have to dig into my books to find the research, but I was just so shocked because I had this bias that people discriminate towards foreign names, and Kevin is just as West European and American as it can get. Here's a link to the paper, you can probably just write that down if you want to read it. They go into a summary about it, but it's what you'd expect. This is hilarious and deserved, not the a-hole. That's hilarious, I love it. However, once you made your point, you may want to turn it down before little Kevin goes crying to Karen about the mean Karen. Not the a-hole, but that won't stop the repercussions when HR does eventually get involved. If HR gets involved, what should they do to protect the company? There's disruption centered around one employee. Is it easier to deal with the employee or a large group? Sales is who brings in the money. Is it better for the company's bottom line to disrupt sales or whatever individual position you may have? Yes, I'm cynical about HR doing the right thing when they can damn well do the easy thing. Especially a third party cut rate HR. Posted by user The Lackadaisical, titled Am I the a hole for rubbing my belly? I am 28, female, 6 months pregnant, and am the first in my family to be pregnant. My family has reacted weirdly towards my pregnancy so far, but this is a whole new level. I'm wondering if I'm the a-hole or not. Being this far along, I'm constantly feeling the baby moving inside me. She presses on my bladder and makes a ruckus in there. I found that gently rubbing my belly up and down, over my clothes, calms her and keeps her from jabbing my insides with her feet. Due to COVID, I haven't been able to see my parents until last weekend. So far, it's just been me and my fiancé celebrating the pregnancy, so I was excited to show them pictures of my ultrasound and catch up. My sisters, 30 female and 28 female, came over to visit while I was at my parents' house. We were sitting around and chatting when I felt the baby start to act up, so I absentmindedly began to rub my belly. My sisters both gave me a look like I was doing something disgusting. They asked me why I was rubbing my belly and told me to stop after I explained. They said it made them uncomfortable. I obliged and stopped, thinking they were just being weird. An hour later, I was grilling with my fiancé and was rubbing my belly again. My older sister saw and snapped at me. She told me to stop. It was weird and I looked like Buddha rubbing his gut. It was offensive, but I stopped to keep the peace. I just wanted to have a good time. Later, we went out for ice cream. Before I got in the car, my twin sister, who is also pregnant but not showing yet, stopped me and made me promise not to rub my belly in the car. She said loudly, to make my older sister laugh I guess, no belly rubbing Buddhas in my car. I said okay, I just wanted ice cream. While standing in line for the ice cream, I began absentmindedly rubbing my belly again. My sister saw, snapped, and shouted, The lackadaisical! Stop! That's so weird! Everyone at the ice cream joint turned around and stared at me. It was so embarrassing. Before leaving for home, I asked my mum what my sister's problems were with me. My mum said it was the belly rubbing and it was weird. My fiancé had my back and explained that it calms the movements and it's completely normal for me to do that. My mum said I was being overreactive and to imagine how hard it must have been for her when she was pregnant with twins. 
This still didn't answer my question, but my mum told me to be normal around my sisters and to stop being so sensitive. I feel weird because I thought I wasn't doing anything wrong. So Reddit, am I the big bellied a-hole? No, you are not the big bellied a-hole. You're the big bellied saint and we should all praise you for your child calming abilities. I'm sure a lot of people would love it for, to be that easy, I guess, in pregnancy. I'm sure there's some karate artists in the womb that don't give up whenever they're kicking and they're like, yo, your hands ain't gonna stop me. Bam, liver, bam. Your sisters really need to understand where you're coming from. It just seems like they're ignorant and they're unwilling to accept your point of view on this and be like, oh, she's rubbing her belly because she doesn't like being kicked from the inside. God, I don't like looking at that. That's disgusting. I ask you, comment section, how often would you see a pregnant woman in public rubbing her belly and you think, ugh, what, what's wrong with her, you freak? No, that's not a normal mindset to have. That's stupid. These siblings are stupid. The mom is stupid for enabling it. OP, you keep on rubbing on. Edit. I'm humbled by the power of Reddit. Thank you all so much for your reassurance and advice. I realize now that my actions were normal, but my family has some issues they need to work through on their own. I'm not going to waste my time trying to figure out their problems. I'm going to keep on rubbing my belly and enjoying myself. Maybe I'll update later after the baby arrives. Thank you all again. Love, Big Buddha Belly. Not the a-hole. Um, I'm really confused. What you did was normal. That's what I thought too. I have no idea what their problem is. Especially since my twin sister is pregnant too. It's so weird. It's perfectly normal. It's part of the bonding process and a way for you to protect her. It also relaxes you and baby and helps alleviate discomfort from stretching and carrying an actual human being inside you. Your family are wrong in so many ways. Rub that beautiful belly, mama. Rub it whenever and wherever you are and tell anyone who has a problem with it to back the hell off. Also, the skin is stretching and it itches. I mean, how can they even walk down the street or do grocery shopping if they're sensitive to such things? What if they hear a fork scratching a plate? What if they saw a dog eating another dog's poop? There will be that old guy showing his furry beer belly. Whatever. There will be this guy with a piece of boiled egg in his beard, loudly chewing his sandwich on the morning bus. A woman with disgusting village manicure, sitting next to them in McDo- Ugh. But their sister rubbing her baby belly is an issue. Right. Not the a-hole. Are your sisters usually temper tantrum throwing radars? Because they sound insane. Who cares if you rub your belly constantly or scratch your elbow? How is it any of their business? If they have a problem, they can stop watching. They are definitely characters. They have been so weird since I got pregnant. What makes it even stranger is that my twin is pregnant too. Is it an attention thing? Not wanting to share the limelight? It's so strange and I'm kind of stumped why your mother is going off the deep end with them. It's amusing that your sister made a scene in a store like a toddler because she was embarrassed by you. Did she forget her manners? Regress to childhood perhaps? Were I you, I would tell them next time, I will be rubbing my belly. I don't care what you think because it's not any of your business. This is a you problem, figure out how to deal with it. Both of my sisters, in my opinion, are weirdly attached to their childhoods and my mum. Whenever we're together, we only talk about childhood memories. Any other topics are disregarded. My overanalyzing self says that they're weirded out by me growing up and changing the norm of the family. I don't know though. When you're rubbing your belly, are you lifting up your shirt and getting up all in there? Are you moaning? Is your belly rubbing more akin to a vigorous cleaning motion? If not, consider starting. Establish dominance, okay? And that goes for you too, my thick boys in the chat. You too. Posted by user Looping Knots, titled, Am I the a-hole for not including my recently divorced ex-wife on a family trip? Ten months ago, my wife of 15 years explained to me she had interest in a co-worker, so I left it up to her to decide whether to open up our marriage. I figured it was just an exploratory phase. You know, like something she would have a change of heart about. After five months of being miserable with her going off with him nearly every weekend, I expressed to her I wanted to look for someone else. She replied that it would only push her to the other man. 
Nonetheless, I started seeing someone, and after the first day of me seeing someone else, my wife wanted a divorce. Ooh, oh my god, sis, damn. We have officially been divorced for a week. We have three kids together. We are also living together for the time being, while she and her boyfriend are closing on a house together. Recently, our family's friend's wife contacted me and invited me and the kids to join her family on a trip. I planned on taking my girlfriend along with us. I explained to the family friend that if my family were to go on the kid trip, my kid's mother would not be going. They acknowledged and figured that was going to happen. Realistically, there is no room for two extra people. Personally, I have no interest in going on a trip with her and the man she left me for. She said she was hurt that my girlfriend is going in her place and that she was ousted so soon. No, you deserve that. She suggested that it could just be me, her, and the kids, as per usual before our divorce. While our papers were signed a week ago, I am ready to settle into my new normal. Am I the a-hole for not including her? What crevice of Batman's cave did this weird mentality crawl out from? Dear lord. Yeah, I want you to go alone without your girlfriend on this family trip, while I take my new boyfriend who I had for five months and broke up with you instantly when you found someone else because I was too, you know, uh, sensitive to deal with my emotions like a proper human being and end it five months ago. So yeah, how about we just you, me, and the kid, and I'll sneak him later into the trip, and at that point you'll be trapped with us anyway, so it's not like you can do anything about it. You're not the a-hole for not including her. Take the girlfriend along. You have the power in this one, OP. Love that. Love you. Continue being awesome. Edit. My oldest is 14, and has known about basically everything from the beginning. My younger two are 9 and 10. Both had suspicion about their mother's relationship with the boyfriend before finding out the gory details. Mine was a tidy secret until that point. Once the younger two learned the truth, they made the decision as to when they met my girlfriend. This has been two months today. The conflict for me falls to the other family having been our friends for 14 years. Also, the desire for things to remain healthy as possible between my ex and myself for the sake of the kids. My ex hopes to still do things like this together as family, and in the future, maybe we can, but right now I don't think I could stomach it. I explained this to my ex, and she seemed to be heartbroken at the notion. She is crying, and I just feel irritated. Kinda makes me feel like an a-hole. This situation is centered around myself and my ex, the kids are actually doing pretty well. Edit 2. I spent five months doing everything I could think of to save us. She spent five months leaving me at home with the kids, lie after lie, and zero craps given about my feelings. The exact moment I said F it was when she didn't want me to attend her office Christmas party as I have every year for over a decade. Her reasoning was she didn't want her co-workers to think she was a tramp. Sounds like to me she was pushing a narrative that I was no longer in the picture. That was the moment I realized where I stood, and that being faithful to her was a waste. My girlfriend walked into my life three days later. The hypocrisy and insanity that followed were truly unbelievable. After her initial immediate demands for divorce, she decided that we should start working on our marriage. Step one was ditch my girlfriend. Mind you, I had known her for a week and had no real ties to her. Nothing to say about how she would end her five-month relationship with a man she works 40 hours a week with, and that is centric to her friend group. I may or may not be the a-hole for excluding her from this trip, but I'm not asking about the demise of the marriage. Just gets messier the more you read into it, doesn't it? Dear lord, she is hot garbage. Not the a-hole. She wasn't technically invited if I'm reading this right. Also, big yikes at it being okay for her to indulge in your new open marriage, but not you? She can't see her hypocrisy and double standard. She always justifies it by saying she and her boyfriend check all of each other's boxes. Great for her then, but she no longer checks all of your boxes. Most importantly, the trips away box. She cannot have her cake and eat it too. That trips away box got me, damn it. <laughs> not the a-hole. She should have thought of that before deciding to pursue another man. She is not being ousted because she's literally looking to move into a house with her boyfriend. 
She has a whole new life and seems to be just fine when you aren't going on a vacation. Exactly. He did not oust her. She left him. She wants to have her cake and eat it. Damn it, stop saying that. <laughs> he can't seem to oust her fast enough. Like, she keeps leaving him without actually, you know, leaving? Found a new dude. Didn't leave. Found a new house. Didn't leave. Hell, she found out about the trip. Now she wants back in. I mean, for God's sake, woman. Martyr Complex. I'm fudging someone else, but if you do it, I'm gonna leave and it'll be your fault. I've left you, but woe is me. You're not taking me on vacation with you? These comments got long, but this one just came up and it's actually really good. Not the a-hole. Your family and you were invited. She's the ex, so doesn't count as a real family member anymore. And is not amused that she is now excluded. Girl, this is your price for playing a stupid game. She can have an open marriage, but when you want the same, that's a reason for divorce? What the fuck? By the way, ex and boyfriend are living in your house. So before you leave for this trip, collect all important documents, bank stuff, expensive jewelry, and put it in a newly rented safe deposit box, and take photos of how your house looked. Until now, you were very accommodating to her. But I guess, as soon as you all leave and she is alone with the boyfriend, reality will hit home, and nobody knows what she will do then. This post really should be higher up. The OP needs to protect himself, given how entitled her ex has already been. And yeah, I wanted to include that one because that's a very good point. We don't know what this woman's going to do. Better safe than sorry, especially given her past actions. And that's just a heads up for any of you guys if you ever find yourself in a situation like this. Posted by user Get Off My Beach, titled "Am I the a-hole, or I guess a we, for making a family that is trespassing on my property uncomfortable?" Twenty-six male. My boyfriend and I live in a lake house. I have two brothers, and our father has been in the picture since I was fifteen, and my boyfriend's father left him and his mum when he was really young. My brothers are twenty-four and twenty-one. The 24-year-old has a girlfriend who I think is 23. My brothers and the girlfriend came to spend the weekend with us. We have lakefront property and a little probate beach area. We have signs up that states it is private property to deter trespassers and cameras that monitor the beach. This afternoon, we had been taking a break after going on jet ski rides. My youngest brother was helping me cook lunch, and my other brother and his girlfriend had decided to go down to the beach. They came back up and told me that there were people on our beach. They'd asked them to leave, but they didn't. My boyfriend went down to investigate, and apparently there was a whole boatload containing five adults and four kids. He again asked them to leave, and told them that it was private property. They refused, so he called the police and ate lunch as we waited for the police to come. Over an hour has gone by, and the police haven't showed up. He had been planning to go down to the beach after lunch, so we decided to go down and try and annoy the family into leaving. We played music with explicit lyrics, nothing too bad but still, brought down alcoholic drinks, and played drinking games. We purposely, and out of character, acted rowdy, not putting a filter on what we said. My boyfriend and I, who were not ones for PDA, kept holding hands, making out and stuff because there was a good chance this group of people was homophobic, we live in the South. Is this just a coked up version of the Jerry show? They're like, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. But instead of them being the crowd, it's like the whole group of people on stage, like tackling each other, making out. The cameras are getting in their face. Security guards are being pushed back. And they're like, whoa, Jerry, yeah, woo. You're not the father. You're not the father, woo. Sorry about that. After a while, the group got fed up and left. Before the group left, one of the women yelled at us, Shame on you people for ruining what was supposed to be a nice Father's Day for my husband and brother. We just wanted a good day on the lake and didn't need to witness frat boys gone wild. <laughs> they named me a sex tape. I shrugged and said, I mean, this is my property. My family and I can do whatever in the hell we want on it. Next time, do as you're told and stay the frick away. The adults in the group looked disgusted. One of the men looked like he was about to yell at us for what we said, but instead they just drove off. The police came much later, and obviously weren't any help. 
As we discussed what happened, my brother's girlfriend mentioned that what we did was immature and kind of rude, and we could have handled it better. Were we the a-holes? For the pure comedic value alone that this created for me as a Jerry Springer stage fight, absolutely you are not the a-holes. That's hilarious. I applaud you for the dramatics, for putting on such a beautiful display. Thank you, OP. You guys are saints in the modern world, and they deserved that for intruding on you guys. I'm sure the police could have done it much more effectively, but you guys did it in a time-efficient manner and got rid of them so quick that the police weren't even needed. So you're not the a-hole simply for the efficiency that you solved this problem. I applaud you, good sir. Not the a-hole. They're the ones trespassing. Honestly, they're lucky that you're not the type that would come down brandishing guns and demanding that they get off your property. Clearly, they weren't going to leave, and honestly, what you did was likely one of the least dramatic ways to resolve this. If the police came and the people refused, they could have ended up spending the day in jail or paying fines for breaking the law. Not the a-hole. The entitlement on some people is mind-boggling to me. If this happened by accident to me and I was told I was trespassing, I wouldn't be able to apologize enough while packing my things and leaving as quickly as I can. This right here. Apologize for the misunderstanding and get the hell out. I mean, if you can solve a problem by making out, drinking beer, and playing music, you resolved the situation as diplomatically as possible. And for the D&D fans, we found the bard. Definitely not the a-hole. It's your property, and they were trespassing. I guess it could have been handled better, but I don't think that makes you guys the a-holes. Just curious. How would you have handled it? I think you guys handled it perfectly. Bonus that you all let loose and had a lot of fun. You should have said, like we said, this is private property and we skinny dip as well. And if one of you has no shame, go full Monty. <laughs> Someone reckons don't do this easy way to end up on a list, but it's private property and I disagree. Oh my god! Lol, you're not the king just because you own land. A crime is a crime. That's why you gotta dig deep holes. Oh no. Am I the a-hole for abandoning a little girl that I'm supposed to look after? This happens in 2015. I went to the mall to have an early lunch with my friends, roam around a bit, visit some arcade, and play in the internet cafe. I was first to come, right when the doors open, Seeing that my friends aren't here yet, I decide to hang out at the food court, open up my laptop, and play Total War Shogun 2. After about 15 minutes, this kid approaches me. She was watching me play the game, and I don't mind as long as she doesn't bother me. Then her mother came. This woman looks pretty arrogant and somewhat rich, I think. Like the type who would marry a man for his money, and spending the money like it was coming out of his anus. Anyway... She was telling her daughter that they need to go shopping. The kid didn't budge because she was very fascinated with the game. The kid was rather whiny about it. She asks me if I can watch over her child while she goes shopping, telling me that it'll take half an hour. She was saying all of this in English as if she were a fancy foreigner. I respectfully decline, explaining to her that at any moment I'll receive a phone call from my friends and won't stay here that long. She was insistent and put a 100 peso on the table in front of me, and then quickly walks away before I try to tell her that I'm not accepting this responsibility. Whatever, free money. Since the girl is still watching the battle in the screen unfolding and is very well behaved, I suppose it's not that bad. There's a possibility that me and my friends might eat here in the food court, so I decided to return to the game and wait for the woman. 30 minutes have passed, and the woman is nowhere in sight but still no phone call from my friend, so I keep playing. Then over half an hour had passed, my phone rings. Answering it, my friend Jaden, not his real name by the way, is telling me that they're at Pizza Hut, and I happily say that I'll be there. As I packed up my laptop, I saw the girl look disappointing. Feeling a little bad that I'm just going to leave, I gave her a 150 peso note, and told her that there's Quantum Arcade not too far from here, she happily takes it and went her merry way. Am I the a-hole for leaving that girl all alone? Um, yeah, you know, entitled parents is a world of fantasy, and I'm sure this might be too, but dear lord, 
Dear Lord, if this is true, you you are, oh, my, there's a special layer of hell for you to go to, buddy. And also for that mother. I don't think it's every day, bro, that everyone just uh, abandons a kid like that. Come on. You suck, and the mum sucks. Everyone sucks here. That kid needs a new family. Update. Thinking about it now, I definitely should have left her with a security guard, or at least taken her to the Quantum Arcade. There's a lot of security cameras there, and at least one security guard at the entrance, and tell him the situation. To ease your worries, the girl is fine. After about 1pm, after finishing our pizzas, we go to the internet cafe, and what I saw was the girl was already reunited with her mother, who was talking to her phone, looking very angry. They didn't spot me, but I still hid behind my friends. Everyone sucks here. You should have immediately taken the child to security, or if there was no more security, you could have called the police. Agreed. It's not his responsibility, but you can't just leave a kid by themselves. Should have talked to security or police before he left to meet up with his friends. But CPS should be called. She left her daughter with some strange kid. Info. How old was this little girl? It's not your responsibility to look after a stranger's child, but if she was only little, maybe telling a member of staff or something might have been the smarter move. About 11 or 12, I think. I didn't bother to ask her, sorry. You made her sound like she was around 4 to 5 years old. Most 11 to 12 year olds don't need constant supervision. Though, I still feel bad that I didn't at least tell an employee to keep an eye on her. Meh, unless it was in Hermes store or something, I wouldn't worry about it. Posted by user, someone, something, rather, titled, Am I the a-hole for being mad at my husband for staying out until midnight when he left at 6pm and said he'd only be out for a few drinks? <laughs> oh my god, haven't we all been there? Tonight, while I'm feeding our two-year-old daughter dinner, my husband asks if he can go out for his friend's birthday for a few drinks. It's still a pandemic, so I make sure he'll be drinking outside and keeping social distancing, but say sure. Go ahead. He leaves the house around 6pm. Isn't that sure, go ahead, like, fine, it's a trap? It means, you better not, you better not, I, you're in trouble. At 8.20, I ask for an update. He says, we haven't been served dinner yet. Apparently, since he didn't eat at home, I should have assumed he was getting dinner along with the drinks. Fine. I ask where he's eating, and he's at a fancy place we've never been to. I can't remember the last time we went to a fancy dinner together, let alone the last time I even went to a restaurant at all, since it's a pandemic, and they've only started opening restaurants back up. This irks me, because it would be nice if we went back out for the first time together. Still, fine. An hour later, he texts me he's paying the bill. It's 9.30pm now, and I assume since he's paying the bill, he'll be home around 10pm. The restaurant is 20 minutes away. When I haven't heard from him by 10, I ask for an update. He says he's leaving now. 10.30 rolls around, so I call him. No answer. I call two more times, and no answer. Ten minutes later, he calls me back and says his friend just wanted a smoke, he'll leave soon. I tell him he can sleep in the guest room. He finally gets home around 11.30pm. When he gets home, he doesn't apologize, and wonders why I'm upset. He actually takes a tone with me. Maybe I wouldn't be annoyed if this was a one-time occurrence, but before the pandemic, this happened once a month or so. We're not kids anymore. We're both in our 30s. Is it too much to expect him not to stay out past 10pm on a work night? He does happy hours after work, goes golfing on the weekends, and then stays out until midnight hanging out with friends? On a work night? When I'm waiting for him, like, to come home? I never do anything for myself, and I feel like I'm inconveniencing him when I ask to. Maybe I'm missing something. I think he's the a-hole, but am I the a-hole? Um, I guess my judgement here is you might be the a-hole, although I don't blame you for taking that attitude with him, because he's kind of escaping the kids and escaping responsibilities with you, like, all the time. Sounds like he's pushing his boundaries and pushing the envelope too much because he knows he can get away with it, which is a common behaviour that we do see in couples and relationships. So you got to crack the whip like you have been, but your cracking the whip has, seems to be a bit more passive-aggressive. I think you need to go with the aggressive route and be like, yo, no. 
Not until we work out a fair share of who gets to go out and who stays here, okay? We got a two-year-old daughter to be looking after. You can't be like a 20-year-old that's just graduated school and you're like, yeah, I'm out with the boys, we're gonna go partying. I, I get where she's coming from. But being passive aggressive and not solving the issue makes you the a-hole too, because it's not getting anywhere. It's just reflecting poorly on both of you as parents of your two-year-olds. Edits. Thank you to everyone who responded, especially those who were supportive and understanding of my feelings as well as his. After reading all of these comments, some pretty hurtful, I realized that I too was in the wrong. This morning I went into the guest room and apologized to my husband. He apologized to me as well. For some additional background, I do feel like I do all the childcare and have expressed to him multiple times, but I don't put my foot down and make time for myself like I should. He isn't always home at 11.30pm either. There have been nights when he's home at 2am, and he hasn't been 100% honest with me all of the time either, like saying he's on his way home when he's not. We did start couples therapy last week for these and other reasons, but I appreciate that I have just as much work to do as he does. Please be kind, people. I'm not a nightmare, just a mother and a wife doing the best I can. I will try to do better communicating and ask him for the same. Everyone sucks here. Yes, OP was over the top with the amount of checking in, but apparently I'm the only person who thinks it's reasonable to expect your partner to communicate their plans when they leave you at home with a toddler. Expecting someone to come home within a few hours when they say they're just going out for a few drinks isn't setting a curfew. All he had to do was say, I'll probably be out late, I'll let you know when I'm leaving, instead of implying multiple times he was almost done and then staying out for hours and hours later. This is the thing. It sounds to me like he kept implying he wouldn't be out long at first, and that he was on his way later, so constantly checking when that turned out false is different than if they had discussed a late night out. If everything happened exactly as OP said, he basically lied. A few drinks is not the same as drinks and a fancy dinner, then hanging out till midnight. And he wasn't leaving all those times. Does OP suck for checking in, or was she put in a frustrating position? Even if the premise is that his night out is reasonable, negotiable with the toddler in play, there's no expectation either parent gets to stay out till midnight, I'd say unless the party is agree. He was super passive aggressive and sneaky about it if he planned to stay out till midnight, have dinner, etc, but called it a few drinks at 6. OP was passive aggressive too, by continuing to check in the vein that it was relatively okay, when she maybe should have said directly, when we discussed this, I thought you'd be gone a couple of hours for drinks, and I would like you to come home and then explaining the secondary issue that she was hurt, he went to a fancy dinner without even mentioning it to her or thinking of her feelings. But I suspect those calling her a nag would find that direct communication just as bad. Her bad behavior in my eyes was not being direct. I don't have kids because I like my freedom, but you don't get to escape your responsibilities and party till midnight when you have a toddler unless your partner agrees, and she wasn't agreeing to that and it seems like he knew it. Now, if he's usually a dedicated father and rarely goes out, maybe one could argue she should be gracious, but that also requires him being honest about the ask. The thing I'm hung up on is him telling OP he'd be home soon. Honestly, I'd be worried if my partner kept implying they'd be home soon and they didn't show up. Were they in an accident? Are they trashed and don't realize how much time has passed? And do I need to pick them up? Also, if you tell me you're coming home soon, I'll stay up and wait for you. If you're going to be out till midnight, tell me so I can go to bed and don't wait around. I think there are several issues to unpack here, but the biggest one to me is that the husband lied, and it sounds like does so with some regularity. All the other stuff stems from that, not the a-hole. If you want time for yourself, take it. Is he forcing you to hold yourself back from having your own time? He obviously feels no guilt at taking time for himself, and he shouldn't. Neither should you. Have him watch the kids while you go out and have fun. Don't try and control him. Stop being petty instead of communicating your needs properly. It's childish. Just take an equal amount of time for yourself. Tell him you're taking a weekend for yourself, then go. 
God, it sounds like my mom. <laughs> She's always like that. She's like, all right, I'm going out. See you later. Where are you going, mom? Why are you just disappearing? I'm taking a weekend for myself up at the coast. See you later. Posted by user snoo72028. Titled, Am I the a-hole for wanting my son from an affair to attend my swearing-in ceremony? I will give some background because I do think it matters. I've been married to my wife for 12 years. About five years in, my wife started feeling like we were in a rut and emotionally neglected because I was working so much and she was left spending so much time taking care of our two kids. She started an emotional affair with a co-worker, which lasted for a few months before she confessed and ended it. I was really bothered by this because I know that for my wife, the emotional connection is as important as the physical, so it could not have been any worse if she physically cheated. We did not pursue therapy at that point. I thought I was okay, but the hurt continued to simmer and eventually led to me confiding in a colleague, someone in my line of work but not a co-worker, slash friend, which eventually turned into a physical affair. This is a dumpster fire, what? I did not feel like I was wrong at the time for doing this, since I felt like my wife's unfaithfulness was the cause. I was wrong. I don't deny this now. We had an affair for around two years. It was during that time that my partner got pregnant and gave birth to my son. He is now over five years old. I eventually confessed all of this to my wife after I started feeling guilty. He didn't start feeling guilty for two years? Things were bad for a long time, but we did get into therapy and have managed to work through our issues. In many ways, our relationship is now better than either of our affairs, and we have even since had another child. My wife has always been fine with me being active in my son's life, which is something I told her would have to be allowed if we were going to work things out, because it would not be fair to punish him for my failings. Up until now, that has worked well enough. I soon will be sworn in for a new position I am taking, and I'd plan to invite my son to watch, since my other children will be attending along with my wife. My wife freaked out when I told her my plans, and said if I did it, it would be like throwing the, my affair in her face. She thinks it is an a-hole move to invite him, but I think he has as much of a right to be there as my other kids. I can understand her view, but I think I would be the a-hole if I didn't invite him, but let my other kids come. My god! Do you just leave it at everyone sucks here? Everyone has something wrong with them. How is everyone okay with this situation? I don't understand. How, is, how are they cool with this? How did they solve this? Like, what therapy are they going to? Sign me up to that. That will solve all of my problems. I don't know what job he's being sworn into. Probably Mac is manager. He's going up from, you know, restaurant manager to a regional manager. So he's like, I want my son to be there to see me. But I also want my family A to be there too. Family B has to be there. I don't understand the importance of being sworn into a position. Why are you jeopardizing your already very sh rocky situation just for your son to be there? My brain's gonna explode. I don't want to talk on this anymore. I just think everyone sucks here and best of luck to them for solving this. Everyone sucks here, except not your son. You're the a-hole for trying to spin the story where your wife's emotional affair of a few months is somehow equally problematic and the source of your own two-year-long physical affair that produced a child. You literally make it sound like we both cheated when that is not the case. You say you don't deny you were wrong, but the way you've laid this out still reeks of denial of culpability. Your wife is slightly the a-hole for refusing to honor your agreement that your son would be a big part of your life. She's putting her own feelings of embarrassment about your affair above those of an innocent kid. As your son gets older and more aware of the circumstances, she's going to have to learn to deal with him being around without making him feel like a source of pain for her. That said, your son is five. He does not care about a swearing-in ceremony. It will be boring for him and not something he's going to feel sad about missing out on. For this instance only, it seems you could keep the peace by keeping him at home. Yeah, the first part of OP describing his wife's affair really put me off, because she did not have sex and she fessed up, whereas he had sex and didn't confess until after his mistress got pregnant. It feels like he's trying to frame it to show how, see, she messed up too, when this is not the case. 
we did not need to know she emotionally cheated. Her affair has nothing to do with the current situation. Unfortunately, the situation of him including and excluding the kid is not going to stop here. What about other special events like birthday parties or Christmas? Does the wife expect him to exclude the kid from all of those as well? OP is not the a-hole for wanting to include his kid, but this situation and all future ones is 100% his fault and everyone is suffering because of him. Yes, I agree the wife is the a-hole as to the issue at hand, but I couldn't let OP off the hook given the fact, as you said, he is responsible for the whole situation in the first place. It's not even that OP had an affair for me, it's the way he's describing it as if the wife started it and it's her fault that is super a-holy. He said it could not have been any worse if she had physically cheated. Well, yes actually, it could have been worse. She could have gotten pregnant with another man's child and paraded said child around everywhere so all OP's friends and family were constantly reminded of that time she rode that sweet non-OP dick. What am I doing with my life? What led me to reading this? You had an affair, had a kid from that affair, and your wife has not only continued to stick with you, but also allowed you to be inactive in the life of the person you had an affair with. Give her this one. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. How does her floating for a few months lead to a two-year affair by you? You're the a-hole. Your wife did not cheat on you. Flirting with someone for a few months is not at all the same as fudging someone for two years. One is a normal human interaction that was cut off long before it led to any betrayal. The other is adultery that led to a child with your mistress, whom you <laughs> rammed your dick into for two years. You're a crappy person, dude. It takes some next level vindictiveness to cheat on your wife to punish her for developing a crush on a coworker telling you about it, and then cutting off communication before any cheating occurred to save the relationship. In response to her open and honest and totally appropriate communication about said crush and its effect on your relationship, you vengeance conceived a child to punish her after ramming your dick into another woman for two years. That screwed up. You are definitely the a-hole. They were so mad they spelt it definitatily. Posted by user throw ra am I the a hole 45, titled "Am I the a hole for telling my husband's cousin that I couldn't imagine being on Tinder in my 30s when she said that she couldn't imagine being a housewife since she needs to use her mind." Man, people are so mean. We were having dinner at my mother-in-law's home. It was my in-laws, us, and my husband's cousin and my in-laws neighbors. At one point, I was helping clean foot outside, and it was me and my husband's cousin Martha. I haven't talked to Martha since she got out of jail, I mean, much since our wedding, and a few FaceTime calls here and there. She's 36 to 38, works as a project manager for a bank. I myself am 31. After my husband and I had kids, I left my job to be a stay-at-home mom. We were talking, and Martha was just being abrasive, like she was trying to size me up. She starts asking me why I gave up on my career. She goes on to say that hers is super important for her, that she could never give it up, and that she would spend money on a nanny if she had to. And then goes on to say the whole housewife stuff wouldn't work for her because she really needs to use her mind. What is she like, Magneto or something? Dr. Strange ass woman, like, wow. I was just getting offended this whole time. And even when I tried to change the topic, she brought it up. So I told her, yeah, well, I couldn't imagine being on Tinder in my 30s. Plus, for me, I really want to have kids early. You know, after 35, there are a lot of risks of birth defects. I knew I touched a couple nerves, because her expressions just changed. She starts telling me that she could settle down if she wanted to. She just has high standards, and that the birth defect stuff is overstated. The arrogant demeanor she had before talking down to me changed quickly. I told my husband about it. He laughed, but said that my cousin is a bit rough around the edges, and I should have ignored her. He said the birth defects line went over the top. I don't think so. For me, I don't want her going around belittling other people's life choices. You know when you go to the, the zoo, and you see a bunch of chimpanzees just chucking feces at each other? That's what we're doing here. You know, they're both on the ground already. They're both as 
far down as it goes with their insult game. They both suck here. There's no going over the top once you start chucking feces at each other. Both of them suck, and they both know they suck. Everyone sucks here. I'm currently staying home as well, so I understand the judgement. Her comments were completely out of line, but so were yours. Your life, your choice. Her life, her choice. You could have said, those comments are hurtful, this is my choice to spend my time this way, rather than putting down her choices. Seriously, they're both solidly in their 30s, and this reads like a bunch of high school bullcrap. Nothing wrong with standing up for yourself, but for frick's sake, have a little bit of decorum. Opie says her comments struck a few nerves, but it sounds like Martha really touched a few nerves too. And that's just the tea, sis. Opie, your insecurity is showing. If you were secure in your decisions, you would tell Martha she was being rude and ask for an apology, not strike back with tasteless low blows the way you did. Everyone sucks here. She did start digging, but your Tinder line was funny, but then you took it to the birth defects, and that made you an a-hole too. I was gonna say, not have any biological kids at all, but decided to walk away from that. Oh my god! OP, you're terrible! I think if you were genuinely happy and secure with your circumstances, you wouldn't have even thought of a low blow like that. Everyone sucks here. First of all, yes, the birth defects thing was definitely over the top. Don't lie to yourself there. It was an objectively crappy thing to say. Outside of that, you both were crapping on the other person's life choices, so you're both a-holes. Especially because the risk increases from about 1% to 2%. It's definitely an increase, but not a dramatic one. It's actually from 0.5% to 1%. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you for that correction, I couldn't remember how minuscule it was, but I knew that 1% was in there somewhere. The risk for Down syndrome is more massive though. In your 20s, it's 1 in 100,000. Above 35, it's 1 in 400, and above 40, it's 1 in 100. Figures are from my embryology textbook, may not be 100% accurate, because it's been a long time since I finished embryology. Posted by user SliceFun, titled... Am I the a-hole for refusing to renegotiate a settlement that heavily favoured me? A few years ago, my estranged brother and I were awarded a settlement from a situation that we were both victims in, although objectively, I was affected more than him. It is basically hush money, but that's just life sometimes. I'm not getting into the crime here. We got paid an equal set amount in cash, and the rest in stock options. I know more about it than he does, and through the market, my decisions, and what I chose, received and continue to receive much more than he did. As a result, he ended up with less than $100,000 total, and I no longer need to work unless I want to. I am married and now have two young children. I own a home, I am able to be a stay-at-home mum for as long as I'd like, even if something happens to my husband. I am able to build healthy college funds and nest eggs for my kids. I can even afford someone to help me out at night, and a housekeeper, as my husband medically can't lose out on sleep. My brother and I aren't particularly close, and didn't grow up together, but we talk sometimes. He's figured out that things ended up being very uneven, and he's ticked. His life hasn't turned out well, and he is very poor and unstable. He's now demanding that I renegotiate the settlement to make it more fair to him. He's using our dead mother to try to guilt trip me. I don't want to renegotiate, and I don't legally have to. My childhood guardians support me, but I have relatives and friends on both sides. I would think our mother would want things to stay as they are, and would love to hear that her daughter was not only able to keep her children, but also raise them in ideal circumstances. If I renegotiate, I would lose the ability to stay at home and the cushion I can build for my children, as I would lose the dividends, it would ruin my life. Edit, the division was mostly preset. To way oversimplify, it's like we both got 20 stocks, but split differently. I'll put them in three categories, good, fine, and meh. My settlement was basically 10 good stocks, five fine stocks, five meh stocks, while he got five good stocks, ten fine stocks, and five meh stocks. I had my father-in-law's advice and education, he was going on emotion. 
I'm going to say not the a-hole for this one. You know, everyone has their own path in life and he's downtrodden in life and looking for an easy out with you. I understand you can and you're not obligated to. He's not actually entitled to that money that you have now or those stock options. It sucks that it ended the way it did, but that's just life sometimes. I hope you're able to work things out, but life doesn't always work like that. But in this situation, you're not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. It's not your fault your brother isn't as knowledgeable as you in things that helped out. Also, if he's already broke again, chances are he isn't good with money and would waste and spend everything he would get in renegotiations. Life isn't fair, but sometimes that works in your favor. Technically, I had the advantage in the options segment, but a lot of his mistakes were due to poor education on it and bad decisions. Still, he got a 100k bonus to start his life. Don't know where you're from, but that's like college and down payment for a house where I live. I don't know where you live, but that's more than at least half a good house. But I live in the middle of bun frick nowhere. Not the a-hole. If the settlement was dispersed equally and was originally agreed upon, you don't owe him. You're not responsible for how other people turn out. It sucks, but he's ultimately responsible for how his life turned out. The cash part was equal but small. The stock options are where the inequality happened. Are you saying they gave you, for a super oversimplified example, 10 different companies to pick from and you grabbed Apple stock because you understood how valuable it is or would be and he picked a company that went nowhere? Could he have also taken the good stock or did you pick first and took all the good stock? Somewhat. Although I got some higher percentages and better stocks, we both got a variety. He also rushed more to sell due to poor education, while I got a lot of advice that let me not make decisions on anxiety. Yeah, that doesn't sound like you manipulated the situation to get more than him, just that you made more informed choices and had the cards fall in a more favorable manner than he happened to. Not your fault. Posted by user AnonWidow321, titled, Am I the a-hole for not contributing to my older brother's wedding? A little backstory for setup. I was widowed a little over a year ago. My husband had a substantial life insurance policy as well as a successful business that I have recently sold. I have no financial issues. I can raise my daughter without worry. My older brother proposed to his girlfriend back in January. She's nice and seems to love my brother. We have had no issues in the past. COVID hit, so we haven't done family get-togethers or anything. Their wedding planning has been put on hold, until recently. Our state has slowly started opening. No one has been sick, weather has been good, so my dad and stepmom decided to have a family dinner on their outdoor patio to discuss my brother's wedding, with my future sister-in-law's parents in attendance so they could all get on the same page. I tried to dip out because wedding planning isn't my thing. I eloped, but was told my presence was requested by future sister-in-law. My stepmom said she thought I was going to be asked to be a bridesmaid, which would have been a no, but that's besides the point. Dinner was uneventful, but afterwards, my future sister-in-law pulls out a three-ring binder and starts handing out information packets about her wedding, when and where she wanted it, pictures of dresses she was considering, colors, ideas for catering, pictures of cakes, everything a well-prepared bride could come up with. My favorite page was list of expenses, how much she expected everyone to contribute. Her dad, her mum and stepdad, my dad and stepmom, my brother's mum and me. I said, you expect me to contribute? That's hilarious. I was met with a stern gaze from my brother. Oh my god, you're serious? Yeah, <laughs> that's not happening. Cue the meltdown from the bride-to-be. Her dad speaks up and tells her that she was already told that combined between both him and her mom and stepdad, she would be given $70,000 to do what she wanted. Just like they did for her sister. Whoa, they have money to throw. She started crying. My dad chimes in and says, yeah, between the three of us, we will pay for a nice rehearsal dinner for like 30 people and an open beer and wine bar at the reception. That's it. She started screaming, like holding her hands over her ears and screaming, why is everyone trying to ruin my life? So I said, this is where I leave. 
She stands up and comes to me and gets in my face, telling me how it's all my fault. I have money, so I should be willing to spend it on her because she's gonna be family. There's not enough A's in that, it's usually like, family. I just laughed, looked at my brother and said, good luck with all that, and walked out. My future sister-in-law blew up my phone for two days, calling me names and telling me how awful I am. I haven't talked to my brother, but my dad said the wedding planning has been put on hold while she re-evaluates whether she wants to marry into a selfish family. Lamau? <laughs> I know in my heart I'm not the a-hole, but a friend of mine seems to think I should contribute just to keep the peace, which I don't really care at this point about, and my dad and stepmom agree with me. My other siblings do too, but are trying to stay out of it. Edit, because people keep asking, on top of the $70,000 her parents were willing to contribute, she wanted $50,000 from my dad and brother's mum and $30,000 from me. Yes, $150,000 for a wedding. Also, I think she had originally asked her parents for $80,000. Edit 2, this post blew up. I didn't expect it to, I just wanted to show my friend that keeping the peace was not a good idea. Thank you for all your replies, even the one that called me a narcissist and said I should contribute. My stepmom says she has some things to tell either tomorrow or Wednesday, whenever she can catch up. So if there is anything to update, I definitely will. Oh my god, who is this woman? Can we... I want $150,000, not for a wedding, I just want that money, Jesus, don't we all? I have nothing constructive to add to this, besides I am flabbergasted people like this still exist in 2020. Come on people, I thought we were better. OP not the a-hole, dear lord. Not the a-hole. Absolutely do not give any money to her or your brother. I honestly wouldn't even give an engagement or wedding gift at this point. She is so far beyond a bridezilla that your brother needs to truly rethink marrying her. The audacity of what she did is just baffling. She already has a promised 70,000 from her parents. That's a nice down payment on a house. It's one freaking day. When someone shows their true colors, believe them. This isn't going to be a one-time thing. This is who she is. Stand your ground. You are definitely not the a-hole. Do not give in just to keep the peace or you will be doing it forever. I don't care if you have $5 million in the bank. No, just no. It's funny because up until this point, she seemed normal. We weren't besties or anything, but we got along fine. This was such a change, but when someone shows their true cokers, believe them. I wouldn't spit on her if she was not a fire at this point, oh my god. Not the a-hole. That woman is insane. Showing you a list of how much she expects you to pay for her wedding? I can't even imagine having a wedding that costs more than 70,000. Mine was four and a half thousand, I think. Could be 45k, but there's a comma in the middle there. What does that mean? And I feel like we indulged. If she feels that she needs a wedding that costs more than 70,000, she's got real issues. Blaming you because you said something first is just poor judgment. And your father not standing up for you, or at least saying that he wouldn't pay whatever for her wedding regardless of if you said something, is him being an a-hole. I get why you can say hostile things. Dealing with that many a-holes in the family has got to make anyone hostile. I will defend my dad. He did lay into my brother and his fiance after I left. He had already told my brother what the three of them would pay for, they being dad, stepmom, and my brother's mom. They just expected everyone to do what she wanted. Am I the a-hole for possibly making my parents homeless? This isn't just me, it includes my twin brother. My brother and I, 17 male, were in accidental pregnancy. For context, our older sibling is 37 and he has a kid who goes to our high school. Our nearest sibling in age is 28. My parents always made it clear that we weren't supposed to exist. They were never abusive or neglectful or anything, but they were kind of cold our whole childhood. My brother and I will graduate high school in about a week and I will be 18 in two weeks. My parents have told us that as soon as we turn 18, we have to pay rent. Neither of us have jobs, and we probably won't be able to get jobs right now. 
I confided in my sister that I'm really stressed about this, and she offered to let my brother and I stay with her while we're in university, completely free of charge. I'm really grateful for this, and we're planning on accepting her offer. I told my parents about this, and they freaked out. I guess my mum was planning to move to part-time work, and they needed rent from my brother and I to keep up with rent. They said that they have provided for us our whole lives, and we should pay them back now that we're almost adults. I mean, it's true. They have given us everything we needed for 18 years, and I really don't want them to be homeless if they can't afford the rent. But I don't know how I would even afford to live with them. Am I the a-hole? I would say no, you're not the a-hole for trying to survive. They are adults, they can find somewhere else to rent after you two move out, somewhere that is affordable for them. This isn't the rock your parents should be dying on, and they've made it clear they don't want you in their life. You don't have any obligation to live with them once you're 18. You can choose to, but I wouldn't personally want to live with someone that's so emotionally disconnected from me, and made it clear that I'm not supposed to exist. Kind of is like, hey, you know, I would rather have had an abortion than have you, but here you are. You're sticking around, not paying rent until you're 18. You can't move out. Who wants to be stuck in a household like that? Not the a-hole OP. Edit. My brother and I both have some savings, so we could conceivably pay rent for a few months. I also feel guilty moving in with my sister, because she has three little kids and a cat to take care of, and I don't want to put any extra strain on her. None of my siblings have a great relationship with our parents, so my parents won't ask them for help. Edit number two, I'm actually shocked by the support here. I've been talking it over with my brother, and we're going to move out as soon as we legally can. Thanks, guys. Not the a-hole. Your parents are completely in the wrong. They have six children, four of whom are actual adults, and their life plan is relying on two not even 18-year-olds financially? That makes no sense. You do not owe your parents anything, to be quite honest. Whether or not you were an accident, you were their child, and in that regard, they owe you. You do not owe them by virtue of having birthed you. If they need financial assistance, they should go to their adult children. Don't worry about getting a job. Worry about your education and your emotional well-being. Go and live with your sister and let your parents figure their lives out. That's not your responsibility. They are treating you and your twin brother like strangers, so let them rent out your bedrooms to strangers for the rent. It will be a less resentful relationship between them and you and your brother, and you and your brother can focus on your education. Offer to help babysit your sister's three kids, and or help around the house, since she's letting you stay there. You can help her like she's helping you, and you will all live much happier this way. I'm sorry your parents are like this, and good luck. Agree. Help your sister out as much as you can. If not money, babysitting, cleaning, cooking. She is incredibly generous to take you both in. Screw your parents, not the a-hole. Absolutely. I already babysit sometimes, so if I move in, I'm going to help out as much as I can. Plus, the kids love me. I'm the cool uncle. I also have twin sons who turn 18 in two weeks. I could never imagine doing this to my own kids. But then you say that your parents don't have a great relationship with your older siblings either, so maybe they just weren't cut out to be good parents despite having many kids. Don't feel bad, be good for your sister, and not the a-hole. Not the a-hole? It is literally their job as parents to provide for you for the first 18 years. You owe them nothing for that. Yes, not the a-hole. If they had, say, decided not to feed or clothe their children, or forced them to sleep outside without shelter, they would have been arrested for child neglect and endangerment. OP, these people had a legal obligation to provide for you. Don't let them make you feel like they did you some special favours by birthing you and keeping you alive. Now they want a paycheck from you? Nope. There is clearly a reason that your older siblings want nothing to do with your parents. Spoiler alert, it's because your parents suck. Go live with the people that want to see you thrive, not the ones manipulating and guilting you so they can take advantage. Parents who sit there and act like providing their kids with the most basic things is like the equivalent of buying them designer clothes and a Lamborghini are the biggest a-holes in the world. I should know, I was raised by one. Update, am I the a-hole for possibly making my parents homeless? Hey folks, 
It's been like three weeks, and many, many things have happened. I graduated high school, go me. I turned 18, and I moved out. I finally feel like I'm adulting, kind of. I moved in with my sister the day after my birthday, and I've been living with her for a bit over two weeks. It's been really weird. They do all of this stuff in her house that we never did as kids. Family dinners every night? Never done it once until now. My sister and her fiancé carve out blocks of time to spend with the kids? My parents never did that. My oldest nephew, he's 10, dropped an open can of pineapple in the kitchen a few days ago. I expected him to get yelled at, but my sister just helped him clean it up and told him to grab a new can from the pantry. That was weird. My parents were never that chill. When I was a kid, I would see these perfect families on TV. Shout out to Dinosaur Train, lol. And my parents always told me that those kinds of parents didn't exist, that it was all just made up for the TV. That real parents don't take that much of an interest in their kids' lives and interests. I believed them until now. In the past few weeks, I've seen my sister and her fiancé spend hours making model planes with my oldest nephew, or rocking the youngest to sleep when she was overtired. That stuff never happened when I was a kid. My niece, she's four, woke up in the middle of the night last week, crying about something. Instead of telling her to shut the hell up and go to bed, my sister's fiancé got up and sat with her until she fell asleep. I guess I was just surprised that my experiences aren't the norm. Anyway, both my brother and I are doing really well here. My brother has been cooking a lot, and he's going to culinary school, and everyone seems to really appreciate it. I've been spending time with my nieces and nephew, and I've played more Minecraft these past two weeks than I think I've played in my entire life. If anyone knows what Titanfall 2 is, please help me out. I've been an adult for less than a month, and these children and their newfangled video games already confuse me. This is all just a very long-winded way to say thanks. If I hadn't posted here, I don't think I would have moved out. My savings would basically be drained, and I wouldn't be as happy as I am now. So thank you. Now I guess it's time to see if I can figure out how to do an update post. Edit, shout out for my sister for basically raising me for 12 years, and also being an amazing parent. I could just go and say all this to her face, but there's so many stairs in this house, and I'm lazy. And here he says to the sister, who also comments below, Kalani, how many times am I going to have to say it before you accept that you're a good person? Every time I go to thank you for giving up space in your house for me and Cam, you say that if you didn't help us out, it would have been someone else. I get that you have a strangely low self-esteem, as evidenced by your AITA post, but can you just accept that you're an unbelievably good person and move on so I can finally thank you? And the sister comments below, so you can't come downstairs to compliment me, but you can come downstairs to tell me to go upstairs to get my phone, and then come back downstairs so you can see my reaction to you complimenting me? I see how it is. Honestly, I'm just happy you're here. I told you before, me and Michael and Daniel have been waiting so long to move you guys out of that house. I'm just the one who has the available rooms. If Michael wasn't overseas, it would have been him. If Daniel had another room, it would have been him. But anyways, love you both. It's been really nice to have some extra hands around the house, especially with Cam and his cooking. I see why he's going to culinary school. The kids love you, Ethan. I think you're a great kid. Even Aris likes you, and that's pretty darn rare. Keep being that person you are, and I think this arrangement is going to work out fantastic. Edits. Okay, everyone. Just come over and we can have pie and hot chocolate. Love you all, and remember, who your family is doesn't define you. So you can write this whole super sappy reply to me, but you can't look up and say it to me? I'm literally sitting on the same ass couch as you. <laughs> so wholesome, oh my god. I think that's where we're going to leave that post. That's wholesome enough, and I think we got all the good update goodness we needed. Posted by user no step fam, titled, Am I the a-hole for leaving my mum's house after my stepsister wrecked my car? Backstory, my parents split when I was like seven. I'm about 90% sure my mum cheated because she found her new husband like eight months later. My mum's new husband is nice enough and I like him, but me and his daughter didn't hit it off at all. My mum and her dad were good at stopping us from fighting too much, but we have a lot of hard feelings from the past. My dad, on the other hand, is married and his new wife has a kid 
but I get on so much better with my stepbrother than my stepsister. Situation. I have a car that my dad got me for my 16th birthday. I'm 17 and I like driving it. It's not a good or nice car, but I've driven up from Southern California to Northern Cali and back and it didn't break down, so it's a pretty good car, lol. My stepsister wanted to borrow it and I was okay with that, but she totaled the thing. I was ticked. My dad doesn't make a lot and I chipped in for that and when I demanded money to fix it, she said she wasn't going to give me a dime. I went to my mum and her dad to ask for money to fix it and they said to ask my dad to fix it because it's his car. I lost it and told them that their daughter wrecked it so they should pay, but they weren't budging. I had enough and said exactly, fine then, I'll go live with my dad full time, see ya. I called an Uber. But my mum did come outside and try and get me to come back inside to talk this out, but I was too ticked to really think straight. I hopped in the Uber back to my dad's place. When I told him what happened, he said that while he's happy that I want to stay full time with him, that I should talk better to my parents and me blowing up was wrong. I don't really think that what I did was wrong, because they wouldn't pay for a wreck their daughter made. He says he will help me out with the damages to the car, so I guess there's that, but it still isn't the same. This happened about a week ago, and I live full time with my dad. My mum has asked for me to come home and get back to our old system, but I told her I'm not, and I need some time before I talk to her again. My stepsister has told me to grow up and stop being a baby, and I told her to either pay me for the damages or frick off. Am I the a-hole here? Wow, talk about enabling. Talk about enabling a monster. Dear Lord, in what universe could OP be the a-hole in this one? Oh, sorry I crashed your car, but screw you. I'm not paying you a dime and my parents are going to defend me for it. I don't blame him for leaving the mum's house. Why is the mum trying to drag him back? She knows. She's got to know she's done wrong. They are terrible people for that. I'm also sure the insurance company won't be too happy to hear about someone that was probably not on the insurance policy wrecking the car, because they'd be like, oh, it's out of our hands, sorry buddy. I don't blame OP, I wouldn't go back to that house if I was him, I would wait until they apologize and make amends and force her to pay. Those are my conditions, I don't negotiate with terrorists. Not the a-hole. Your stepsister wrecked your car and refused to pay for damages, and your mother and stepfather refused to back you up on this. That is wrong. Insist they pay something towards the damaged car. I'm not taking this to court, but if they don't pay, well, then I'm not living there ever again. You're taking it to court because you're forcing your parents to do so. You can't just switch homes like that. The courts will have to be involved in order to let you do that. Also, a minor can't sue anyone, but your dad could. What about your insurance? OP is 17. The courts won't do anything about the custody issue, as they're almost an adult. If OP chooses to live full-time with the dad, custody can easily change with OP being 17, and then dad can get child support. That can be put towards a car. Ooh, I really like that. Not the a-hole. Your mum and her family are crappy people. You will be much happier not living with them. Hell yeah, I will. My stepmom is good, not great, but I like her, and me and my stepbrother get on wonderfully. By the way, never let someone drive your car, especially if you don't have full coverage. Even then, you will pay for it with insurance increases. Yeah, that was my fault. I thought I could trust her because I practically helped her learn how to drive, and she was super cautious back then. When your stepsister insisted that you grow up, I damn near popped a blood vessel. Don't go back to your crappy mum's place, she can deal with the bullcrap. Just sit back and get through school and work slash college and do well in life. Update, am I the a-hole for leaving my mum's house after my stepsister wrecked my car? Okay, like a lot of you guys said is that I should take my mum and stepsister to court. I was about to suggest that to my dad before my mum called. She was practically crying saying how she's wrong and wishes she could take back what happened. I told her that I wanted her to pay me back for the damages to the car. My mum apologised, and she did. She also wanted me to come back again, and I agreed, because I miss my mum and some of my belongings were there. Me and my stepsister are far from good. I've moved back in, and I think we may have talked like once. 
My mum forced her to apologise, but she wasn't going to apologise on her own. She started all this and doesn't want to talk, so that's on her, not me. Thank you all for your feedback. I'm glad to hear you're getting compensated, but did your stepsister face any consequences at all for wrecking your car and her subsequent awful behaviour? <laughs> no, she's spoiled as hell. No way she's going to apologise. Honestly, it seems like her father clearly favours her and just tolerates you, with your mum being a pushover for him and going along with what he wants. This, by extension, being what your stepsister wants, not very healthy for either of you. Glad to hear that, but sucks to be your dad, I guess. I still see him just two weeks every month instead of the full month that I got with him when I was mad at my mum. I know, but switching back and forth like he was some convenient tool is not right either. Trust me, I know this is not what you meant, but it's just how it seems. Your dad is a wonderful man, so wonderful he gave you advice and told you the things you did wrong while at the same time taking care of the situation for you, which was housing you whilst you were mad at your mum. And I get it, he is supposed to do that. But what if he wasn't around? What if he couldn't help? You have to be cool-headed and patient and not let your emotions get the best of you. If your dad wasn't around, I doubt you would have left the house, but appreciate the things your dad does. It's the little things we don't notice that we tend to miss when they aren't around anymore. I'm sure he was super happy to have you for the whole month. My respects to that man, since my dad is the opposite. Give your dad more respect. This next one we've covered before, but they posted an update. So I'm just going to read the first post and then go through the comments in the update. Posted by user SpyDadThrowaway, titled, Am I the a-hole for installing a keylogger in my son's computer? I'm a single dad, 43 years old, computer programmer. My son, let's call him Jack, is 17 years old. Jack's mum died when he was 10, but thankfully we both handled our grief together quite well. When Jack got his first laptop five years ago, I took my time explaining how the internet worked, the dangers, etc. I allowed him to create a social media account as long as he allowed me to check on it whenever I wanted, which was a privilege I made use of a few times until he turned 15 and I realised I could trust him, having never asked for it since then. He allowed me to know where he stored his account passwords just in case, but I never really looked for them. So his social media and computer activity have been a complete mystery to me in the past couple of years. However, I was always fearful he would try to hide something or get into something dangerous, so I installed a keylogger just in case, always thinking about his safety. I never had to use it, and the more I watched him grow up, I eventually realised I would never really use it, but I never bothered to remove it. My sister and I were talking about this in a casual conversation regarding privacy and privacy apps, and my niece overheard us. They were born the same year. She got offended I would do such a thing, claiming it was a horrible invasion of Jack's privacy, and that I should be ashamed, and the only reason she hasn't told my son was because my sister told her she'd be grounded for meddling in my parenting. So Reddit, am I the a-hole for having installed a keylogger even though I never have to use it? And I said yes, and a lot of the community said yes to this one, it is a huge invasion of privacy. Update, am I the a-hole for installing a keylogger in my son's computer? So, this blew up. I read all the comments, and I really appreciate the insight on both sides, which I will not comment nor give my opinion on, since a verdict is a verdict. Each person is entitled to their own opinion, but I want you to know that I took into consideration all of them, even with the majority considering me an a-hole. It took me two days of pondering, especially with the threat of my niece telling Jack everything, before I sat him down and talked to him. I came out clean, told him about the keylogger, and then explained to him what I did, why I did it, and how it worked. Jack believed me when I told him I had never looked at anything. We both shared a laugh when he told me he believed me because A, I'm a complete airhead, so it's perfectly believable that I forgot about the keylogger for years, and B, he admitted to having watched porn, and he is sure I would have commented on it because both my sister and I both openly dislike the porn industry. He told me he isn't mad at me, that he's glad I told him about it instead of, say, 20 years from now, 
and that he would have done the same thing in my situation, keylogger and everything. I showed him how to remove it and how to look for it in further devices, and we had a look at a few laptops together. I ended up buying him a new one and helped him set it up. Yes, no keyloggers. He let me know the password he used in case it was necessary. Regarding my niece, she didn't tell him anything, but my sister and I had a conversation with them at the same time over dinner. My niece used the same argument as many of you did, with it being the same as regarding a diary, and it was one that both my sister and I agreed with. My sister was admittedly much stricter with her daughter than I was with my son, since she checked her texts and Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp messages, but she admitted it was because of her massive fear that everything that is uploaded to the internet lasts forever, and she was afraid of things like nudes being leaked, undesired contact with bad people, cyberbullying, or any possible hurtful things. They ended up agreeing or disagreeing, and my sister promised to start trusting my niece more with these things, since she knows she won't be able to do anything about it once she turns 18. I want to thank you all for your feedback and for your suggestions over how I should handle this, even the ones who called me an a-hole. I felt like I owed you this update. I'm glad to hear this turned out so well, and bonus to your sister and you talking to your kids together, and I'm glad she's pulling back on the monitoring for niece. Gotta say though, I'm so glad I grew up in the internet age before this parental monitoring software craze. Hey, hey, 2000s kids, we don't need to be monitored. Let's go check out E-bombs world, let's do it. With how nuts my mother is nowadays about everything, from 5G to vaccines, I am so glad she was clueless 15 years ago. Still sounds clueless to be fair. <laughs> She's like super smart in some ways, and then believes this nonsense and things people post on Facebook. It's sad. The internet and cable news actually did to our parents' generations what they were afraid it would do to us. You're a good dad, OP. From this small insight into your life, I can tell you genuinely just care about your son and want the best for him, even if it doesn't follow your own interests. I wish my own dad could have been more like you. Am I the a-hole for not paying my girlfriend's surgery and instead paying my sister's tuition? Basically, my girlfriend who is 22, of two years, was scheduled to undergo a knee replacement surgery next month. I decided to pay for it. The surgery is kinda necessary. She is having trouble walking, and if not done in the next six to eight months, she could risk walking with crutches for the rest of her life, as the success rate of the surgery will go down rather quickly if postponed. Well, guess what? I found out a month ago that she cheated on me last year. Not long term, but a one night stand, which is still as horrible in my opinion. This changed everything. Although I decided not to break up for now. I'm not going to spend that kind of money on her, and as I have already decided I won't be spending it on myself, I decided to give it to my sister to pay for her tuition without telling my girlfriend. She knew last week and she has been crying and screaming ever since that I screwed her life up as she will be disabled for the rest of her life no health insurance, and she will never be able to save that kind of money within the frame of a year. I'm not going to change my mind, but I was wondering, am I an a-hole in your opinion? Whoo, oh boy, yeah, but she's an a-hole too, cheating is inexcusable, but damn, you have really put someone between a rock and a gun in this instance. This is so much further than just a rock in a hard place, dear lord. I don't really have words for this. This is terrible all around. You're terrible for not paying for her surgery, but she's terrible for cheating. I understand why you don't want to pay, but dear lord, you're gonna make someone disabled for the rest of their life? This is like that moral question where do you pull the lever and let one person die or you don't touch it and four people die? I don't have an answer for this one. Everyone sucks here. It's fair enough to not want to pay for her surgery, but you really should break up with her. There is no way to sustain a relationship with you resenting her for cheating and her resenting you because she may be disabled for the rest of her life. This so much. Well, we can be together, but I will just sit here and see how you get disabled for the rest of your life. That will show you, see? You don't have to cheat on me or you go through this. <laughs> Everyone sucks here. She's cheated. That's bad. I agree. 
but you should have the balls to confront her and tell her directly that you would not pay, rather than wait for her to discover it at the last minute. Everyone sucks here. Cheating is awful, so she's clearly an a-hole, and obviously you are not obligated to pay for anyone's surgery, but I think you know to promise something as big as funds for a necessary medical procedure, and then suddenly withdrawing it is a-hole behavior. Also, if you are still salty about her cheating, leave her. Don't tell her you want to stay together and then punish her. What do you guys think about this one? Is he the a-hole? Is he not? There's a lot of people saying not the a-hole because it's his money and he can do what he wants with it. Interesting choices. Posted by user Yana Petra, titled, Am I the a-hole for wanting my husband to cut off his parents after they announced my pregnancy on social media without permission? My husband and I, both 27, have been trying for a baby for over five years now. It's been a traumatic journey, and over the course of the past few years, I've had seven miscarriages and one stillbirth. In April, I found out I was seven weeks pregnant, but obviously didn't want to announce it to anybody, including my family, until I was through the first trimester. We've been through the premature excitement before, and I wouldn't be able to handle it again. My husband, without telling me, told his parents about my pregnancy when he was visiting them about two weeks after I found out I was pregnant. As I said, he didn't tell me, and assured me when he was home that his parents had no idea. Yesterday, I woke up to my husband on the phone to his sister, which was bizarre, as it was 8am, and he and his sister aren't that close. He gave the phone to me as she wanted to talk to me, and she basically screeched, telling me she was so excited I was pregnant. I was confused, and asked if my husband had just told her. She said no, and that her father had posted the night before about it on Facebook. I checked, and was absolutely outraged by his post. It said something along the lines of, I'm happy to announce the pregnancy of my son and his wife. Hopefully this one will stick. June, November 2020. Oh, that's terrible. I was in complete disbelief, as not only is that extremely insensitive, I had no clue how he had found out. How can you just go on Facebook and say, hope this one will stick? Dear Lord, how are people this stupid? My husband told me the truth and apologized, but explained they were his parents and he had a right to tell them. I told him that the only thing he had a right to do was frick off and respect my choices when it comes to my body and my trauma. We got in a huge argument, which resulted in me telling him I want absolutely no part in his side of the family anymore and that I want him to cut them off. He told them and they're outraged with me, saying I'm overly sensitive and disrespectful, and my husband is refusing to apologize or even recognize that I'm hurt. Am I the a-hole? I would say this is a big cause for concern. This is uh, a lot of alarm bells going off. I wonder if there were events preceding this that led to such a reaction as now. Because I don't think it's often that things are going normally, and then, you know, you make your views that you've shared with your husband privately for such a long time, like you put them down because you're like, yo, you've crossed a boundary, and he's like, you know what, screw everything, I'm not listening to you anymore, I don't care about your trauma, you're too sensitive. Doesn't seem like normal behavior to me. I'm gonna go with OP is not the a-hole. I don't care that OP's actions are abrupt. I don't care that they are very wild right now. Would you not go wild if you were her and have your trust broken by your own husband and have her family attack you and intrude on your life like that? Their actions cross a line. His actions cross a line. Although I do think that asking the husband to cut off his entire family over this is a bit overstepping it, I would tweak that and say, you need to limit contact until this thing blows over, and in marriages and relationships, there should always be room for that compromise. OP not the a-hole. Everyone sucks here. They screwed up big, but asking your husband to cut off his entire family over it is not reasonable especially since it sounds like he didn't discourage it at all. Your real problem is your husband's dishonesty and complete lack of respect for you. He not only went against your wishes, but lied to you about it. Why are you focusing on his family and not him? Yes, your husband is the a-hole in this whole situation since he disrespected your wishes and then flat out lied to you about it. He is the problem here. Exactly. 
I'm not saying you shouldn't be ticked as hell or that your in-laws hope it will stick comment wasn't insensitive as hell, but your ultimatum was way off. But your husband does need to recognize that he was way out of bounds, that he should put you first and respect your wishes, especially when you've been through such a difficult time. Plus, he lied and dismissed you like your feelings are totally irrelevant. Honestly, you might want to take a time out and go to a hotel for a few days and just get a chance to calm down and think about what you feel and how you want to go forward. I'm guessing that she is asking for this not because of this one issue, but because of a long line of his family acting like this. I don't think you have an in-law problem, I think you have a husband problem. I will say, father-in-law is also a bit of a problem. Hopefully this one will stick, like screw all the way off. I gasped when I got to that. What the absolute hell. This man's got really downvoted for this one. Not everyone deals with trauma the same way. Joking could be a coping mechanism. It's not his fudging trauma to joke about on social media. Again, not everyone is the same. Is it possible he didn't know he could joke this way with her? You don't always know someone's intent, especially on the internet. I'm sorry, but it's always inappropriate to joke about a death, let alone a baby's death. Like, what the hell was he thinking? What kind of crack is he on? Oof, that man justifies it in the next comment, not gonna show it. Basically, he had uh, six miscarriages with his wife, but it's different because they were joking about it because it was between them. It wasn't someone else's baby. That's where, that's where the line crosses here, buddy. Learn, learn your place. Posted by user Quarantine Earbud. Titled, Am I the a-hole? I won't give my parents all of the inheritance as my grand took them out of the will. For context, my father's side of the family is very small. There is only him, his mum, and his sister who is married, but without kids. I, male 25, am an only child. My granddad was a very successful civil engineer and bought 10 residential properties to provide a retirement income. Before he died, both him and my grandma wrote a will that gave my aunt five of the properties and my dad the other five. The remaining money was to be split 50-50 up to a certain threshold, and the remainder donated to cancer research as my granddad's brother and mum both died of that whilst young. Now, around 12 months ago, it was clear that my grandma really wasn't fit to drive. Her reactions were terrible, her eyesight was going, and was repeatedly having minor incidents. As it was her final marker of independence, she flat out refused to stop or visit a doctor for a third opinion. Anyway, the final straw was when my dad went to visit and there was a huge dint in the rear bumper where she had reversed into yet another bollard. After having warned her previously, he decided to take her keys away and leave a letter fully explaining why he did that. When my grand found the letter, she went absolutely ballistic. And after lots of arguing, threatened to write my dad out of the will unless he gave them back. Now, I don't know how I feel about this, because on one hand she really shouldn't be driving, but on the other, it is still technically legal, and as an individual, she should still have the opportunity to exercise her free will and go driving. Anyway, my dad refused to give them back out of principle, saying it is a danger to others, and criticized her for trying to manipulate him with inheritance and said he didn't need the money anyway. My dad kept hold of the keys, and nothing much was really said after that. It was all kind of brushed under the carpet, Grand took taxis, and whilst there was a bit of tension when we met up, nothing much more was said. Anyway, unfortunately my grand passed away, and I'm informed by the executor of her will that I was getting all half of her estate instead of my dad. No one really expected her to go through with it. After thinking a lot, and as a gesture of goodwill, I offered my parents half, as that's what Grandad wanted, and kept the other half, as that's what Gran wanted. Parents and aunt still accused me of accepting money that wasn't mine, and that I should give it to them, as Gran wasn't in a sane mind. I didn't budge, and said I'd rescind my offer should they hire the lawyer they were threatening to. I was given a lecture on how I'm too young to have this amount of money, and that I will have no incentive to be a productive member of society. Then even said he would write me out of his will, which is exactly the same as what he criticized my grand for. Parents are now flat out refusing to speak to me at the moment, other than through their lawyer, and have basically disowned me as, no son of theirs could act like this. 
Want to make up, but feel I've been pretty fair. I'm going to go with everyone sucks here in this situation. I just recorded a whole minute and a half of backing up my reasoning for that before, but I read some comments and I'm like, damn, I'm stupid. I'm just going to say, yeah, everyone sucks here. Everyone's logic is defeating itself. I like that the dad stopped the grandma from driving. I really like that one. This situation is just a test of which hill am I going to die on. Everyone sucks here. You're an a-hole for refusing to acknowledge that the reason your grandma left you that money is because your dad did the right thing to protect her, the public, and that inheritance you care so much about. If she'd killed someone, you can bet there'd be a hefty lawsuit, and she got mad. Your dad is an a-hole for threatening to sue you over money he said himself he doesn't need. To be frank, but don't call me Shirley, your statement that, as an individual, she should still have the opportunity to ex exercise her free will and go driving after you yourself acknowledge she was no longer fit to drive is an a-hole comment in itself because it indicates complete disregard for the safety and rights of others. My opinion of that is, at least he left it in so we can see his true feelings about it. He had the opportunity to edit that out and paint himself in a better light, but I'd say it's good that that was unedited because we can see the human aspect. People make mistakes, people have stupid opinions. Your dad probably should have tried to have the state step in instead of taking them himself, but free will is not unlimited and neither are driving privileges. Eh, I disagree that the dad sucks. I mean, I don't see any reason to get the state involved when he had it handled pretty easily. Opie needs to be a little smarter than he is. I mean, it seems like this would be a pretty straightforward case of the parents being able to prove that grandma was not of sound mind, so they are going to waste legal fees and pee off their family over something they know is true. You're the a-hole, and be smart enough not to pee off your family. There's nothing that indicates she wasn't of sound mind. Diminished vision, spatial perception, and reflexes are the primary age-related reasons a person is unfit to drive, and don't indicate cognitive deficiencies. Pettiness and revenge are perfectly valid and legal reasons to alter your will, and also don't indicate cognitive deficiencies. I'm not saying she wasn't experiencing issues, but we've been given no information which makes that a foregone conclusion. This. I'm often asked to perform cognitive and vision assessments to determine if a person is of sound mind or not. Just because someone demonstrates visual perception deficits doesn't mean they have deficits in cognition or executive functions. You'd be surprised how often a visual deficit is mistaken for cognition deficits. Alright, this is starting to hurt my head, but some of you guys might want to hear this. I wonder if she refused to stop driving, even to the possible detriment of others. Would it be a sign of cause-effect realization failure? It's pretty common for seniors to be incredibly reluctant at giving up their last grasp at independence. To Opie's grandmother, driving was hers. It's not a sign of mental degradation, but perhaps a sign of either desperation and a bit or a lot of selfishness. Nut Me Shell reckons, You're the a-hole. So your father did what was necessary to keep your grandmother safe and everyone else on the road safe, and you decided you feel okay capitalizing on your grandmother's poorly placed anger? Your grandmother was vindictive, and you're an opportunistic a-hole. Your grandfather didn't want you to have that half of that money, and truth be told, it doesn't sound like your grandmother did either. She was trying to manipulate your father. Here's the thing though. Grandma had total control of her estate, which includes whatever grandpa left behind. It is entirely within her rights to change what goes where. A last will and testament is exactly that. Whatever grandma had written up and notarized is what goes at the end of the day. Tough crap if that upsets people. Everyone involved knew what was up. Dad even said, I don't need your money. So why is he upset? That's all true, but this is not a legal discussion. Sure, whatever in the will is legally binding and a right as such, but it is also legally an option to choose not to follow the will. By following the will, OP either agrees with the reasoning of the will, or he agrees that the will is unreasonable, but chooses to ignore that to benefit himself. In this case, it seems like OP mostly agrees with his father's decision to limit her driving, but the money matters more to him, so he doesn't care. That's what makes it immoral in my opinion. Posted by user Secret Room Help, titled... Am I the a-hole for telling my boyfriend to throw away his shrine to his exes, or I'm done? 
Hi everyone. I never thought I'd be posting anything like this, but here we are. Throwaway account for obvious reasons. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible, but I really need some advice and think the backstory is important. I, 25 female, met my boyfriend, 28 male, on a popular dating app three months ago. We had a few formal Skype dates, and this quickly turned into FaceTiming each other for hours every day. I got laid off my job, due to the current events, and he works from home. So we had a lot of time to get to know each other. We fell hard for each other. Fast forward to about two weeks ago. I moved in with him. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but my lease was up, and with everything going on, I still don't have a job, it just made sense. Everything seemed amazing. Honestly, it felt like a dream come true. He works in the second bedroom that he uses as an office. I thought it would be nice to surprise him and make him lunch, since I had nothing better to do. So, I tried bringing him lunch, but his office door was locked. I knocked, he opened the door and took the plate from me. He thanked me, but he seemed a little annoyed, and was quick to shut the door again. I brushed this off and figured he was busy. Over the next week and a half, I noticed that door is always locked. I started noticing him going into his office late at night for about 5-10 to 10 minutes each night. This really got my curiosity going, and I decided I was going to get into that room somehow. So, last night, I waited until he thought I was asleep, and sure enough, he got up and went into his office. I crept out of bed and opened the office door, and he was sitting at his desk with an opage storage bin on the floor next to him. He jumped up and threw the lid on the box and started yelling at me, asking what I was doing in there. This caught me off guard, but I demanded to know what was in the box. After some arguing, he finally opened the box. There were notes, keepsakes, photos, and female clothing. Nothing lewd. I was shocked and asked why he had this stuff. He said he knew I wouldn't understand, and they were just nice memories from his past relationships. He said he was totally over them romantically, and just because he wants to keep the memories doesn't mean he wants to be with those women, and that he only wants to be with me. I absolutely lost it, said that he was being creepy, and said that either he gets rid of this stuff or I was done. He said I'm an a-hole for giving him an ultimatum, calling him names, and shaming him for having emotions. I understand having a keepsake or two, but an entire box? It seems a little over the top to me, but maybe my reaction was a little harsh. Today has been really awkward, neither of us have apologized or talked about it yet. Reddit, am I the a-hole for giving him an ultimatum? Um, yeah, I would say both of you are an a-hole for your reactions in this situation. This seems like a very weird, very out of left field kind of situation. I don't understand why he keeps so many memories, but each to their own in this situation. I've got nothing else to say about that. Everyone sucks here. I don't I don't know what to say. Here, duck 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 da 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 duck duck gives me a good reason why. Everyone sucks and here is why. As others have mentioned, you moved in after barely knowing someone. You both sounded really desperate and set up no boundaries or barriers, so you're both to blame. You moved in out of desperation and he allowed it, so you're both to blame. That is never right, that is a huge stress on a relationship, and while some can handle it, it's typical to end poorly. While I can admit that it is a bit odd that he has those things, there's nothing inherently wrong with it so you're to blame. Maybe one of his early significant others died while they were together, and he decided to be sure to make memories tangible. I don't know, so I'm not going to judge the guy. I'm just saying it's not inherently a-hole behavior. You were definitely an a-hole for making a fight, and an ultimatum that sounds like it could easily have been discussed over tea while sitting together on the couch. That's fair. I do feel bad about starting a fight over it, I'll clarify that he hasn't had a significant other pass away, and I do understand keeping some things like notes, concert tickets, things like that. What throws me off is the clothing, and looking through it seemingly regularly. I'm going to talk to him calmly when he gets home later. What throws me off is the fact he goes through it every night. It's one thing to have a box of keepsakes from your life you go through every now and then, but a box dedicated to your ex that you've got a daily ritual of visiting? You're going to have to talk about that. 
It's super strange to go through it in the middle of the night. I may be into a lot of true crime, but my vote is he's a serial killer. Oh my god. When's Shane Dawson putting a documentary up on this? Um, people saying you're the a-hole because he's allowed to be sentimental and have memories of the past? Are you not realizing he takes it out every day to look at? Or is it just me that thinks that's odd and creepy? Exactly why I made this post. Now I'm even more confused reading the comments. Having the box is okay? Looking through it every night is weird. I'd verify if that's what he's doing every night. It's what you caught him doing one night. Maybe he does all the embarrassing things there. He could be stuffing his face with Oreos, watching clown porn, or any number of things he prefers you not to see. I think you guys should have a serious talk. He could be looking at the box all the time, which is pretty concerning. But maybe he feels the need for his own space, which wouldn't be too concerning. But ultimately, you need to know what's going on, and if it's something you can be okay with. Having the box is still fudging weird, bro. Unless one of them died, or one of them was married to you for 20 years, and had kids with you, it's fudging weird to keep a box of keepsakes and clothes and memories of your exes. No sane person is going to be happy with that as your significant other. I'll admit it struck me as super weird, but without the backstory of it, I wasn't sure if I was missing something. I get having old concert tickets, maybe some photos from places you've been that include exes, so you don't want to display them, but at the same time, you don't want to toss them because they're of a cool place. But the clothes is where I was pretty lost, I mean, I'd be asking about that. Not the a-hole. If you found the box lying around in storage, I'd say you were maybe overreacting, but why the hell is he hiding it from you and opening it seemingly every night? That is so weird. I'd give him one of your socks to add to his collection and get the hell out of there. All right, so that I'm not completely repeating the same points over and over, I think I'm gonna end the episode there, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one today. I hope you had a good night, sleep, day, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Say hi to Outro Marky. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one today. Tell me what you thought of it down in the comments below. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would love you to subscribe because I love your face and I love seeing you here every single day that you are here in this video. I don't know what else to say today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. I do have a second channel that's called Marky2. Link should be up on the screen somewhere here if you don't have Adblock installed. Uh, if you don't know where to find the channel, you can go to my main page. Just click on the Marky face and it should be on the right somewhere there or on channels if you're on phone. Hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.